Hello and welcome to On The Esky. Uh, the boys are back. We've got Monkey and Peppy here. And we've got a special guest, Chris Pappas, the Pappy, joining us. Hi. How you boys doing? What's up? Yeah, good, good. good. Hi. <laughs> welcome back, Chris. Good to see you. I've been on an expedition. Where to? Not very far. It's COVID. <laughs> <laughs> So big week in sports. Um, we're going to do a wrap up, of course, of the AFL, NRL, NFL. Uh, this week's race in the Formula One. We've got NBA. It's a bit of rugby news. The finals in the NHL. Uh, some results from the UFC and boxing. And I think we'll finish up with a little bit of NBL at the end. But I, to kick off, uh, the first kind of big story. It happened uh, last week, kind of while we were um, on air. Uh, was the shock death of Dino, um, Dean Jones. Yeah, very sad, 59 years old. Um, you know, obviously pass out our respects and condolences to the family. Um, real legend of Australian cricket, the way that he went about it. And sort of a precursor to the modern batsman in how aggressive he was. Mm, definitely. And uh, I always remember my old man telling us the story about Dean Jones in India. Uh, the yeah, I think it was the highest score still to this day ever made by an Australian in India. Um, he was having, it's like it was like 40 degrees and having um, severe dehydration. Mm. And he was, I think he was on a drip for two days. Yeah, afterwards. he was pissing brown. And he, I think he come in at, um, you know, at lunch and he said to AB, he's like, mate, I'm, I'm fucked, I can't go on. And AB is going, oh, typical soft New South Wales, uh, typical soft Victorian, you know, can't, you know, can't keep up and, you know, do what he needs to do for his country. And he went out there and made 200 and had the highest score ever um, for an Australian in India and absolute legend of the game and will be sorely missed. Definitely. And, you know, like you're saying, very big in India, um, very much so like Brett, with Brett Lee and him, mm. the two of them were commentators over there for the IPL. Um, mm. So th- the story coming out of that was Brett Lee was the one in the hotel um, helping out doing CPR as well as part of that. Yeah. Um, so I feel for him a lot too. Um, yeah. Losing a very close friend and a mate like that, especially. And an um, idol, I'd imagine. Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah, but it's, it's a not a nice thing to ever do CPR on someone. Um, the, you know, once CPR commences, it's the chances of survival are actually quite low. And it is. It's not like in the movies. No, and it is quite. Invas- yeah, yeah, that's right. So obviously thoughts with Brett. Um, but yeah, that's another legend gone and gone way too early. Yeah. Way and too young. Big props to Brett Lee. Um, he did go out and commentate a couple of hours later. Yeah. Like the game they were meant to uh, both be doing it. It's be hard to compose you know. yourself after having yeah, a good something yeah, like that. Yeah, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. Big props to him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just RIP Dino. Australian cricket's lost a legend. Definitely. So, moving into the AFL, um, big round of finals. Finals footy. Mm-hmm. The current game uh, being played is Port Adelaide versus the Geelong Cats. Um, close after the first quarter. Uh, Geelong started off a bit hotter and then cooled and then Port Adelaide started coming back into it, but still close at 13-10 after one. Who are, we think, who are we thinking? I think we've been saying for a very, very long time that Geelong and Richmond are, are kind of two favourites being veteran clubs uh, with good, good lists. And with experience in finals? Yeah, I think Geelong's form of the last few weeks, um, you know, been a little bit lacklustre. But the last time these two teams met uh, back in round 12, uh, I think they won by something like 47 points and just really ran over the top of Port. Um, mm. Port oh, there's that man again, Tom Hawkins. Um, they got, Should they, kick this one. Yeah, they, they've got to shut him down. He's the Coleman medalist um he's just looking really good and i think last that's time just because he's oiled up oh yeah <laughs> look at looking good in my eye. Uh, yeah mommy says was that uh, letting me know oh, don't, isn't that the guy that you've got a man crush on no no sarah i like his footballing <laughs> ability and that's it There's the fact that he is glistening <laughs> he's, yeah really it's just coincidence he's really oiled up this evening in adelaide um and he's lining up to try and give geelong the go ahead at 10 13 quite low scoring in the second half it's been uh some contested footy, and yeah, he oh, has shanked it. Shanked it right. That, that's pretty bad. For really him. should have kicked that. I yeah, think he's definitely. three behinds now. Um, this could go either way. There's a massive crowd out there at the Adelaide Oval, which is so good to see. Yeah, crowds back at footy. Yeah, um, it looks like it's. A set, I don't know if they've. They mustn't have any restrictions. It looks like there's fifty thousand in there at the Adelaide Oval, and they're going mm. mad. And they've done a good job filling it to make it look like it's very full. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, I suppose you know throughout the podcast uh, we will 
keep a track on this game. It, pr- it won't be finished by the end, but uh, we might have a um, yeah. inclination as to who goes ahead. I'm going to stick with Geelong, but this is looking like it's going to shape up to be a very nice game. Yeah, it should be close, and we'll see how much that crowd actually plays towards the end of this. Mm. Justin Westhoff left out of the team. was big out, 260-odd mm. game veteran. Um, definitely thought he would have been making the run on side, so it shows that Port's really got to the depth there. Um, but yeah, it'd be, be a cracker, and it's end-to-end footy at the moment, just no one really capitalising and yeah. getting getting points on the board. So th- then the other game, uh, the next one, uh, we talked a little bit about this before, Richmond uh, versus the Lions. Um, I think very similar sort of stat for Richmond. They've beaten the Lions both times this year by about 40 points. I think once this year by 40-odd and then in the um, uh, semi-final last year by 40-odd, mm. uh, which was in Brisbane as well. Yep. So, yeah, you know, despite finishing third, um, Richmond definitely has the, the recent history over the Brisbane Lions. Um, it'd be a cra- another, another cracking game. Mm. Hopefully Brisbane sorted out their goal kick and that's – that's thing, the biggest problem. I think yeah. that's really let them down. And I think the last few times they've in these games against Richmond, they've kicked something like eight seventeen and four seventeen. So well, if, what was that story about them at training? Yeah, so I was reading today, uh, apparently uh, I think it was, might, might have been Zorko's idea and the, the coaches to just get all their, their forwards and um, you know, goal goal kickers to practice goal kicking and just really sledge the just absolutely take the mickey out of them and and because they all know each other so well just try and be you know quite personal and and cut quite deep and see how they they took it and uh apparently it was quite a good bonding exercise for the boys uh zorko spoke quite highly of it and hopefully they were kicking them straight yeah i can say i wouldn't want to be on the end of a mitch robertson sledge no i think mitch would get pretty uh creative if he throws his words around like he throws his body around uh he'd be yeah, wouldn't want to be on the end of it. But over the last few weeks, you know, Hipwood's been kicking a bit straighter. Rayner's been kicking a bit straighter. Really need those guys to fire. Yeah. Um, and McStay as well to get in there. Yeah, yeah. Big O. Stick some marks. Um, I, I think we've spoken about it the last few weeks. Despite finishing third, this maybe is Richmond's premiership to lose. Mm. They've got all the experience. They've, you know, been there uh, the last few years. They don't really have too many... Um, big injury concerns at the moment. Um, when is that game, James? Uh, that's, it is that's tomorrow night. Tomorrow tomorrow night. Yeah, fr- night Friday, night. Friday, Friday, 2nd of October. Um, so the two other games of they Saturday and Sunday then? Yeah, both the elimina- eliminations. Yeah, yep. so yep. Sinks. Both, both on Saturday. So we've got yeah, one in the okay. Arvo up at the Gabba and one at 8 in WA. Yeah, so St Kilda uh, Western Bulldogs. Yep. Um, Saints returning to the finals for the first time in a long time, as we alluded to. Last last podcast mm-hmm. um, against a, a Western Bulldogs team, which is sort of showing a bit of form towards the end of the year here. Could, could go either way. I'm going to go with the, the Dogs. I think they've just maybe have that little bit more experience. Their midfield's awesome. Yep. Um, and then the game after, I think, is probably the only one that I'd be confident tipping this week. And I, you'd, think yeah, West West, West, you'd think West Coast in front of, you know, a, a lot of people um, out at Optus Stadium uh, should – should have Collingwood. Uh, so was that two games at the Gabba back to back? No, so it's the Gap. So Gabba Friday, Gabba Saturday. Gabba yes. Friday, Gabba yeah. Saturday. Yes. Yeah. So, so the back sur- back. there may be some. Well, you'll be interested to see what surface is like. Yeah. For the elimination game. Yeah. Because mm. I'm assuming they'll then have to back up and play another finals game the following week. So Correct. It's yeah. going to get a lot of lot of ground, a lot of meters in it. And the Gabba is notorious for its surface not always holding up the best. You been following the lines at all? Uh, Pat, he's been very busy the last few weeks. I uh, am just hopeful that the goal kicking drills have helped out because <laughs> the last couple of years they've uh, they've been, they've been getting down year. there. They're just uh, missing in efficiency. Yeah, but uh, it's such an exciting young squad that's been coming up for the last couple of years. The bulk of the team's been on the journey from when they were at the bottom of the ladder yeah. to yeah. now being contenders of being amongst the top teams in the league so it's been an incredible journey and it's going to still continue to grow hopefully as a Lions fan well it's a good point you make because they're probably in their window so yeah got, in the next few years you know yeah. well you know if include last year this year maybe we've got another year or two in this window and then you've got to start thinking about well who's going to be around in those following years well Lockie Neal's absolutely in the form of his 
life. Exactly. Like he's probably guys a, get older. Pr- probably a shoe in for the Brownlow, and you'd expect him to continue that for a few more years. But guys like Zorko, you know, even Charlie Cameron, um, you know, around da- a little da- while. Da- Daniel Rich, yeah, they they do have a few guys that are starting to get on a little bit, but. It, yeah, I think it's a big window. I think they've they've got three, four years of of being good. Well, they uh-huh. they've drafted really well in the last previous years. So all the yeah. blokes that are now playing for them, like Cam Rainers and you McLuggage, etc. Yeah, they're in that you know that early twenty bracket. So and even they're. Harris Andrews is only about 22, 23. Yeah, I think so. he's a year older than them. So yeah, yeah. He's only so I, th- I think they'll be good for a few years. But yeah, you'd want to start really going well, deep. Capitalize on the window you're in now. Yeah, so. indeed, indeed. So, I think we'll move on from the AFL. Yep. Uh, the NRL. So, they're going in the first weeks of finals. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Broncos got the wooden spoon and uh, I'm not sure if you boys have been see, following some of the uh, Brisbane fans. Not impressed. They're throwing wooden spoons on Red on Red Hill on the Oval. They're training yeah, out there. Yeah, I saw the – did anyone see the video of the poor groundskeeper going around yeah, with, yeah, with, with a, a milk good, crate? and Picking all the wooden uh, spoons. Yeah, he had about half, of, half a milk crate full of wooden spoons. Had some good arms on them. Some of them were right in the middle of the field. Yeah, and I saw today someone had put up like an eight-foot uh, wooden spoon with Broncos on it and Broncos colours all yeah, over right. it. So, yeah, I don't think they're happy in Brisbane land. Do you think it's Broncos fans that are doing it or maybe some New oh, South Welshmen up there that are maybe got a little bit too much time on their hands? <laughs> Possibly, but, well, uh, they can't cross the border at the moment. So <laughs> no, I'm some, but, well, maybe expats. Some expats, yeah. 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 I think maybe it might be a culture of having so much victory in yeah. the state, not only just in the club format for NRL, but state of origin yeah, as well. Yeah, being so mm. good. Queenslanders might be, maybe just a sore losers right now yeah. in the yeah. NRL. Yeah. Well, maybe, Queen, maybe. Do yeah. wear their heart on their sleeves up there, though. Yeah. 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 yeah, Queensland NRL was, this is probably the worst year for them. Yeah, well, that's, well they not didn't, a single didn't side have a top eight. Yeah, single side in the finals. I'd be very surprised if, they win Origin this year. Um, yeah, it's, it's probably the the sorriest state of Queensland Rugby League yep. in a very long time. So we'll come back and talk a bit more about the Origin. Uh, the um, next story on Brisbane, uh, Kevin Walters confirmed his coach. So he'll start, I think, ASAP. I'm not sure whether he will do Origin this year. I can't remember if they've said that he has to relinquish that. Um but considering that he's only oh, really going to start about recruitment next year, maybe he could still do it. Yeah. Especially considering half of his Brisbane team may, well, the big guys will probably be playing for Queensland and at least get a head start with them. Yeah, I wouldn't say half the team uh, these oh, days. A few, but, yeah. But yeah, there'd, there'd definitely be a few guys there. And I, I do believe Walters has got that state of origin gig. Um, I think it'll be good for him, you know. Obviously, Queensland are through and through and the whole Seabold thing seemed like it was a bit of a... yeah. Shamozzle. Especially when I think Kevin wanted it. Well, he definitely wanted that job when he was there. Um, yeah, yeah. He wanted under it Wayne, And when Wayne moved on, he, he thought he'd get it and they went with Seabolt. And his name was definitely in the hat um, oh, in a big time you know, before the Seabolt signing. So yeah, maybe I mean, that'll resonate with the playing group. But. So the follow-up story is that they're also considering Craig Bellamy for the following year to come up and be coaching director. Mm, mm. And that kind of role to then work with Kevin. And Kevin's co- spoken quite highly of Craig. Well, of course, worked with him in the past at Melbourne. So that may work, but then you always got to wonder about those kind of relationships. You've got two, you know, a well-known head coach, well, probably one of the best, you know, top three head ever, coaches ever. ever. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Um, and you got him sitting over the top of you and you're, you know, have your first gig as a head coach in the NRL after being a coach of an origin team mm. and being a long-term assistant. Um, whether is this Kevin's team for a year and then, Craig's going to push him around a bit or whether they'll work together too many in cook, harmony. Too many cooks in the kitchen, maybe. Mm, definitely definitely concerned, something to watch. But again, they've got to pull um, Craig out of Melbourne. Yeah, that, that, that's a there. huge hypothetical in itself. Definitely. Uh, and again, a huge hi- hypothetical whether um, Cameron Smith goes up there yeah. or he finishes his career in Melbourne. He's still not telling anyone what he's doing. Um, uh-huh. But that's also another thing. And... Uh, if, he, if he's going to go anywhere, he'd probably go where Craig is because they're very, very good mates. So if Craig said, I'm going to go to Brisbane. What's everyone's gut on Cam Smith? I'll go first. I reckon he retires at the end of this year. Uh, he's If they win, I think he retires. Okay. So that's conditional. I, I, you know, right off in the sunset with a win because the last time they won was, was four f- years ago. Yeah. So it's been a hot minute. Yeah. Monks? 
Retire or go again? I think whatever he does, he's going to follow Bellamy. Yeah. 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 I reckon yeah. that's huge possibility. If he's going to keep playing, he's got to be, he'd probably be with Bellamy. I reckon he Which, if he's there for another year at Storm, so maybe he's another year at Storm, and then when Craig's like, I'm going to Brisbane, maybe then he retires. Yeah. That's also a possibility. Mm. Pat? I concur. <laughs> <laughs> so it's reading up on the on the state of origin. So it looks like Kevin Walters will be in and around. He, leading up, he'll have charge, mm-hmm. but they're expecting to announce a new coach. Oh, okay. So I've, I've seen Wayne Bennett's name been. Yeah. So the three hat. favorites are Wayne, uh, Paul Green, because he missed out uh-huh. in Brisbane. Uh-huh. Well, Paul so Green would be an interesting choice. Mm, yeah. Definitely. And the final one, Mal Meninga. Oh, oh Mal. So It'd be huge if they got Mao. Get yeah, Mal, bring yeah. Mao back. But there's a lot of history there. Of course, his concern is he's the Australian coach, and mm-hmm. they kind of they've got this thing where you can only be one. Yeah, you got to dedicate yourself. Yeah, um, very much the same as like if you're a rugby league head coach, you can't be the state of origin head coach, yes, state of origin, yes. etc. Got to de- dedicate yourself to the role. But then, if ma- there's any year to do it, it's this year. Like, yeah, is exactly. Is there any tests? Yeah. No, so there's no international football this year. Yeah. So Mouse was like, I'm sitting around. I could do it this year if you want. Yeah. Um, and I think that'd be really good for Queensland. Maybe yeah. bring through some young boys mm-hmm. and hopefully mm-hmm. firing them up like he did um, in 2011, I think he started yeah, think with yeah. Queensland. He went through yeah. to 2015. Yeah, it'd be massive, you know, as a young kid, you know, you're playing your first few Origin games or debut and, you know, play for one of the biggest legends or Queensland legends that Origin's ever known in Mal. Mm. Yeah, it'd be massive if they get, but Bennett would be good. And yeah, I'd probably go Mal one, Bennett's two, and Paul Green's your last option. Yeah. Not nothing against Paul Green, but no, just the good. other two above you. Yeah, well, they're both legends. They're just both legends. Both, both legends. one in that arena. Yeah, throw um, Paul Green's name out there in any other conversation, and it's a bit, you know, it's tough to pick out other than him. But Wayne and Mal, like, yeah, you would the best. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you wouldn't kick either of them out of bed, would you? So, uh, following on from the Curtis Scott story of recent days, um, he's also got all his legal fees covered. Mm-hmm. Um, so the police force has to pay for his legal fees, about a hundred k. Yeah, good for him. Um, I th- don't think I seen anything about him deciding whether he's going to sue them or not, but he's probably well within their rights. Um, but unfortunately for him, he's had a leg surgery recently and he's had a plate put in, so his year's done. Yep. So he won't be playing finals footies for the Raiders. In a first in our rugby league scandals, he didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> He's off the hook, old Curtis Scott. From the, like, I think we mentioned last week, the footage that I saw really didn't seem like much. He was pissed. Yeah. Uh, if anyone in this room has been pissed at the Sydney Cricket Ground, please raise your hand. Uh, that is the sound of me raising my hand. <laughs> so I'm just glad I'm not in the public eye because mm-hmm. um, I might have been, you know, taken through the ringer over that. From what I saw, he it was. You know, curled over somewhere in the Sydney Creek. Yeah. Oh, he was comatose. He's kind of risky. Yeah, Blood yeah. But uh, the way that it got reported was he assaulted a police officer, and I, I think that was just it's all garbage. Fake yeah, news. Plain old defamation. Um, but no, it's good for good for Curtis, and hopefully he can uh, you know recover from this injury in twenty twenty one. Get healthy. Yeah, yeah, and be a regular stayer in the Raiders. Uh, you know. Uh, starting seventeen because he's you know had an up and down year that wasn't didn't really live up to the hype um, coming up from the storm and there was a f- you know a few young uh, backs for the Raiders that have really stepped up so you know he's going to be uh, you know part of the committee there I guess next year and have to reprove himself. Yep. So on the signage front, uh, Kieran Foran has signed to go back to Manly. And one year deal. Yeah, it looks like he might play nine. Yeah, because they've got a young bloke I think coming through who he's going to play six, and he basically said, "If Kieran's coming, I'm gone." Yeah. So maybe, maybe the audacity him. of that. Yeah. Well, you know, like, it's, it's, but if he's he's eighteen years. What's that kid's name? Uh, um, oh, you stretch my memory, here, baby. Mark, can you just jump on the Google uh, Manly um, five eighth? It's something uh, Marshall or uh, maybe something like that. It's going to come anyway. It's the same situation that the Storm are in at the moment with Cameron and Harry Grant and whoever the young, other young bloke is that's playing for them at the moment. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's you know the, the young blokes want to come in. They want to start. They want to have a go, uh, make themselves uh, in the league. You know, get paid, of course. Uh, but you know, for the, for the teams, it's their question of. 
are we worried about missing out on the next generational player? Yeah. Like, could could Harry Grant be the next Cameron Smith? Well, from what he's shown this year, I'm not going to say Cameron Smith, but he's going to be a very good rugby league player. Is it, yeah. Um, so you, you don't want to push them out just to... And I wonder how much comes from the player and how much comes, you know, from their agent and, you know, their family and, oh, you know, you, you should yeah. be the starting... You're good enough, you should be starting... You should be the starting six and, you know, all of that. Um. But yeah, it's it'll be interesting to see what happens there. Mm. Maybe maybe just play, well, plays as a mentor kind of. Who, who's role. playing nine for them at the moment? Do you uh, know? Appy Corusio. No, so. Carousel's at the Penrith, so that's what makes uh, me think about it. Uh, apologies, apologies, Dan, uh, Danny Levi, the old Knights uh, nine. Yeah, so, so like, they probably could do with an upgrade of hooker. Yeah, um, so it may be doable, but nothing Kieran, against Danny if you're listening. Yeah, but Kieran Foran uh, being on the a six or seven for the last decade. Oh, and sorry to interrupt you there, Sean, but Tom Hawkins has just kicked his fourth behind mm-hmm. and is probably a big part of Geelong trailing by two points coming up to half time here. They're, they're two and six so far, so mm. yeah. So be very interesting to see what happens there next year. Yeah. Uh and then on the coaching signing front, Dean Young has signed with the Cowboys to be assistant. He's mm-hmm. joining Todd Payton up there. Yeah, so well, two former players, similar, same decade they played. Oh, yeah, they, they would have been um, playing against each other a mm-hmm. lot, um, Todd Payton and Dean Young. be interesting to see, you know, two guys, you know, under 40 up there running a, a rugby league uh, football team. I, I'm a big Dragons fan, love Dean Young as a player, um, love the footage I saw of his old man. Obviously, never, well, I wasn't around to see his old man, but, um, you know, my dad and my family raved about Craig Young. Um uh, very un- unproven guys. Um, so it'll be interesting what happens. Maybe you know, um, after a couple of years, Anthony Griffin flames out of the Dragons. Um, he can come back and be their coach. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> well, he's still got what? Uh, how how long did he sign that contract for uh, the Dragons? Two, two. It'd be it'd between be two. That, two to three years, I'd say. Yeah. Um, if he sees out that deal, I'll be surprised. Well, they're not that bad. <laughs> come on. <laughs> Coming from a Broncos. Fan. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was, it was very interesting going back to Todd Payton uh, actually turning down the Warriors job. He was mm-hmm. offered it, mm-hmm. said, yeah, yeah, nah. Um, and then comes back to Australia and it's like, oh, that Cowboys job looks good. I'll take that. I wonder if he had already had a chat with the Cowboys. Maybe. Maybe that was in there and he, that was his thinking. Maybe a slightly better list. Uh, well, maybe want to come back to Australia too. Um, mm. Not been in over there in New Zealand. Uh, but. Really, the New Zealand squad wasn't in New Zealand this year. They were here. No. But still, um, whether he just doesn't like the support there, the, the culture around the club, who knows? Oh, uh, yeah. I'd be very surprised if that was the case. If, you know, uh, as a as a guy that has never coached at the elite level to turn down a head coaching role, I, I think he might have already had a coffee with uh, the Cowboys um, board. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about the uh, finish up the state of origin. Mm -hmm. Um, Jonathan Thurston has kind of put out his team Mm -hmm. that he thinks for the 17. So at the moment he's saying Ponga at one, Mm -hmm. yet uh, Valentin Holmes at two with Mm -hmm. Branko Lee at three. Interesting selection. Garbage. (laughs) (laughs) He's been better this year. Uh, Is he still playing for... No, he's at Melbourne, isn't he? He's at he? Melbourne, yeah. yeah. So maybe... Garbage Raiders, garbage of the doggies. and He's got a few tries, but it might be a factor of a system Yeah, you know, being being down there. You don't get more talent going to Melbourne. You just, you're just you in the system. Who's uh, the other centre? So then four is Gay Guy. Five is um, David Stoko, Corey Oates. <laughs> uh, Shout out to the Stokes. So Our n- number one fan. Oh, no, sorry, number two fan, Ben Sawell, if yeah. you're listening. <laughs> So not as bad of a back line as I think we were originally thinking. I think Holmes is a bit undercooked this year. I'm not a huge fan of Lee. The other two have been there and done that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, Ponga, of course, has been the X Factor. Yep. Six and seven, Munster and Evans. Jerry Evans, that is. Yep. Uh, Same as last year. Yeah, that's a great half pairing. Yeah. That's the only thing really going for Queensland. And we said that before. That they're they're a really good ca- um, half pairing. Mm-hmm. Um, pa- Papali at eight. Uh, Jake Friend at nine, so Friend to start hooker. Mm-hmm. Uh, not uh, a bit of like a Mike Hussey uh, type introduction there for Jake Friend. You know, obviously played a few hundred mm-hmm. uh, first grade games and never played for Queensland because there's been a guy called C Smith yeah. um, running around for them. 
I don't in the, and when he got it to start last year, you got hurt. So he's yeah. been, been unlucky. Yeah, so wish Jake all the best if he uh, does get selected there for the Queensland nine role. So number 10 is Lindsay Collins. Who does Lindsay Collins play for? That is a name that I'm not very familiar with. Is he a Gold Coast Titan? Could be. James, find that out for us. Lindsay Double. Collins yeah. starting 10. So then I can't say number 12. 11's Kafusi. 12 is Tino. Um, Roosters. Yeah, Roosters. 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 Roosters, Lindsay Collins. Roosters, yeah. Can't say I've been following that too much. No, well, I don't know. They've had Takiyaho and Warrior Hargraves. So maybe does he come? He must come off the bench for him. Maybe. But to start as your 10? It's a big call. Big call, especially. They're, they're, in these articles, they always need, you know, one or two big calls. True. Well, there's no Nappa in this team. Yeah. Um, is Na- Nappa is Napa healthy? He hasn't been. P- I don't know. Doggy sucks, so no one's been following him. Thanks. Can we get Dylan Napa injury? Mm. Uh, Maguire, Locke, and then you've got Hunt, Arrow, Walsh, and Carrigan on the bench. And Car- who is Carrigan? Patrick Carrigan. Patrick Carrigan. I'll have a little look there. Yeah, look, it's it's not a bad team. I just actually, if I go back through this, Corey Oates is Brisbane. And yeah, how many Broncos players were in there? Because I, th- I think that's it. Yeah, <laughs> not many. It's not like the old days where. You know, they got one. Yeah. And it's probably because they can't pick anyone else. Here you go. Patrick Carrigan is a Bronco. Oh, okay. So it looks like Napa's got a medical ligament tear. <laughs> medial. Uh, medial. Medial, sorry, yeah. They all tend, to, they all tend to be medical. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you'd say Big Dylan Napa. Or big Puppy, as he's yeah. affectionately called. Well, the other Big Puppy's playing, so we've got one of them at least. <laughs> That's right. Um, James, can you pull up uh, the finals round? So week one of the finals for the NRL. Kicks off tomorrow night with the uh, first place Penrith Panthers against the fourth place Sydney Roosters. Mm-hmm. That's the one. It en- should be a crack enthralling game. game. If it wasn't for last week, the Roosters probably would have started as favourites. Um, yeah, could have well They been, just got absolutely dismantled. What was it? By, six by South, 60 to 8. Yeah. <laughs> and they rested a couple of blokes, but they were... They were close to the team they that they'll garbage. have tomorrow night. And you you would think the Roosters, uh, the club they are, a big money club, they'd have some good, decent reserves floating around. Yeah. So they've got nothing to sneeze about. And South, after being garbage against the Bulldogs a couple oh. of weeks ago, come back and just pump and put 60 on um, the Roosters. Like, think of the punters, seriously. South Sydney, take a look <laughs> at yourself. Take a look at yourself. You go out and destroy Parramatta 38 nil about a month ago. Now... Souths were about four bucks in that game. They go out when they're about a dollar twenty against Canterbury and lose, and then they go out when they're again they're about three dollars against the Roosters and beat them by fifty two points. Yep, it's a, it's a cruel game to try and tip rugby league. Tell you what though, if that South team rocks up in this final series, look out because they are explosive with the football. They mm. like Cody Walker was unreal. Alex Johnson had five tries. Like they. Just, they just looked unstoppable. So what was what, what was South? They were where they finish. Where they finish? Uh, they finished six, sixth. So six. they've got Newcastle. Newcastle. I, I think yeah. they should win that game. When, who Newcastle pump on the weekend? Weekend, yeah, they won on the weekend. Uh, they did. They uh, well, they lost to the Gold yeah, Coast the week yeah, lost, before. Lost that to was, Gold Coast. That was Pepsi's hot tip. Um, but uh, they they are coming off a win. Uh, on the weekend, uh, they no, smashed no, no. the dragons the week before. Yeah, yeah. Th- that yeah. was the week before, and then last week was the week they got pumped by the Gold Coast. Yeah, okay. So yeah, a, a, a little bit of form coming a, into it, but yeah, well, I'd probably nah, pick South. So a, a team that doesn't. just lost by thirty to the Gold Coast Titans, I yeah. wouldn't be putting my money on them. So no. I think South win that comfortably. Yep. So what game wins that game? So South Knights are on Sunday. Sunday game. Yeah. So then the Raiders Sharks is so five versus eight is on the early yep. game Saturday. Early game Saturday. Early game Saturday. Yep. Um and the Raiders should win this based on they played them last week and with uh, with, with a half team and and ran all over mm. them. Yeah. So let in let in a few easy ones that were throughout there, but they always had a two try lead. Mm-hmm. So I think they did it pretty easily. Yeah, if last especially the missing eight guys. Yeah, if last week's anything to go by, the Raiders win that quite comfortably. Uh, I think nine and a half thousand allowed in at GIO Stadium, so it'd be good to see them play in front of a you know yep. see the crowd get behind them. Yeah, yeah, the biggest crowd that they've played in front of this year. So then the final game, two versus three, the late game on Saturday. Yep. Um, Storm v Eels. Storm v Eels. 
Melbourne. Should but for me, yeah. I, I just I've been harping on it all year. I think Parramatta are pretenders. Well, but and to second that thought, I think Penrith. Uh, maybe pretenders. It uh, wouldn't surprise me if the Roosters get up for this and they beat them. Yeah, the Penrith have to do it the hard way. Yeah, it wouldn't. That wouldn't mm. surprise me. Um, I just oh, last week just threw a spanner in the worst. Oh, know. huge spanner. Mm. So that'll do it for the NRL chat. Um, the update the score in the AFL. It's half time. I think I saw what was it twenty six twenty five or twenty 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 five twenty four. Is it twenty six twenty five? Port Adelaide in front. Ah, uh, thank you and. Yeah, looking like a going to be a cracking second half there over a bit at, of beef at the Adelaide between Oval. the two teams. Dangerfield went off with a bloody uh, cut to his uh, just above his eye. Yeah, did you see the hit? Low scoring oh, game. Yeah. It was like get out of my way. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, I forgot the football. <laughs> so we'll move into the NFL chat. Uh, we'll probably start off with the week that was. We're round three. Mm-hmm. Um, the Broncos. Uh, had Tampa Bay, but the big news out of that was the whole of South Park showed up for that game. Yeah. They were in the crowd. <laughs> the, all the cutouts were there. Cardboard cutouts. Um, all socially distancing, wearing their masks, so good on them. Uh, game overall for Denver wasn't very good. Um, Buccaneers did it quite easily. Uh, Denver is struggling for a quarterback at the moment. They benched um, Driscoll and then went to Rippon or Ripon, depending on how you want to say it. I think Rippon sounds cooler. Um, <laughs> How do they say it? Is it Brett Brett Ripon? I think it's actually Ripon or Ripe Ripon Ripon yeah, something like that. Um, so he's actually starting this week um, over Bortles. So Bortles is mm. going to be the backup, I think. And they're hoping Lock not Lock. I keep saying that Lock is back next week. They're hoping week five, but I think week six is more realistic. Mm. So we'll see where we go. But they're still hurt. They lost their backup right tackles now gone for the year. Um, and they lost their starting defensive tackle as well, uh, Tori's bicep, so also gone. Um, so they're really banged up. I'd be panicking if I was a Broncos fan. They, I am a little bit. Yeah, they, they've got the Jets this week. Got so. The, so in the, the game of the week on Friday, on Thursday night, <laughs> Jets versus Broncos. Um, Is that tomorrow's game, our time? Yes. Yes. Oh, God. It's absolute garbage yeah, game. Yeah, that is. Two own three teams, so mm. one will come away with the win. Mm. Um the Jets are that bad that Denver thinks – well, Adam Gaze is such a bad coach, Denver thinks they could play a third-string quarterback that's had four throws in the NFL and probably still win. Um, I had a look there. Our runners for this game is 39, which compared yeah, to – take, take the unders. Compared <laughs> to the, the Chiefs-Ravens the other day, which was 55, um, yeah, speaks volumes of these two teams' offences. Yeah, well, yes. There's no – the quarterback issue is – is a problem for Denver. Mm. Well, who knows? Maybe this will be their, their only big game of the year and they'll score 40. Um, unlikely, but... You're more hopeful chance. than I am. It's the <laughs> only chance they're going to get. <laughs> this game could finish nil uh, all. Of their, 20, of their 22, I think they're missing eight or nine starters now. Yeah, so it's, it's yeah. a big big part of their club. Yeah. Wait, was, was there in the history of the NFL a game that ever finished scoreless? I'm sure there must be. Yes. Yeah. There's definitely been a few draws. A score, scoreless draw? Scoreless draw. Yeah, yes. scoreless draws. Uh, Google is extraordinary. It between yeah. the 2016 Lions and Browns. I reckon, or no, no, it, no. just in the time that I've been following it, I think, I think I've seen a game which was 6-3. I um, think there's at least been one in the last two decades. You're going to be stretching this year. Really? Yeah. So why James hasn't well, mate, that? Maybe Google lowest ever NFL score. Why well, he finds if, that out. If, we'll, if, there was ever a time to break this streak. It might it's have yeah. been, yeah. Oh, I, I think these teams are too bad, are bad are enough. That they'll, they'll be a pick six. They'll, they'll, they'll be, be pick sixes. <laughs> there'll be some field goals. They'll, they're bad enough to get points. Um, Cortland Sutton still out for Denver? Yeah, ACL, done for the year. Jeez. Yeah, they're, they're like I'm saying, they're hurt. They're really hurt. I've got Jerry Judy. Do I start him? He's going he's gonna to be their number one receiver. He's been hurt a little bit recently. Oh, just head saying crush. the Dangerfield head... Uh, head clash there. And the Port Adelaide player just putting his dislocated finger back in his socket. Mm-hmm. Been a bit of a hard game oh, so far. Sure has. So let's talk, we'll talk about them. Will so, you find it? Yeah, I found it. I think I found it. So the last 0-0 game in the NFL was back in 1943. Going back. Oh, yeah. Yep. And it was the Lions against the Giants. 
Doesn't surprise me that it was those two teams. <laughs> yeah. I was 50% right. <laughs> <laughs> so, obviously, Second World War was in full swing and terrible field the conditions. The replacement. Um, yeah, all the, st- yeah. all the starters were on the Western Front. <laughs> A lot of them were. Um, uh, I was going to say something now. I've forgotten. Don't worry. That's all good. Lost your um, thought. Yes, I lost my train of thought. I was <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, that was pretty quick. That's a bit lower, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's talk about the Monday night game. Uh, Chiefs versus Ravens before we go into all this, the uh, Sunday games. Everyone that's got their stocks in the Ravens are selling. Yeah. It's, uh, went that, away from the run and they didn't really have anything through the air, really struggled. Yeah, um, passing the ball. Do you think the Chiefs' pass defense is good, or are they just really bad? I don't know. Like they were, they're very tight in coverage. Let's put mm. it the way they've mm-hmm. they obviously game plan to take away the options that uh, Lamar likes. Um, mm-hmm. They had very tight coverage on the tight ends and any of the backs coming out. Mm. Um, maybe their receivers a little bit weak with um, Willie Snead and uh, Hollywood, Brown. Hollywood Brown, yeah, and their only options. And Brown's not really a big guy, and Snead's. And they were all over Mark Andrews, who's probably their best passing weapon. Exactly, yeah, take him away, and they take the tight ends out, and then play good run D. Mm. Um, Lamar got around to, to move around a little bit, but still, yeah, well, they, they still had some rushing yards, but they still scored points. They just abandoned abandoned the the run well, after they, they went. They were down by two run. scores, so. But uh, I tell you what, that uh, Patrick Mahomes, he's pretty good at the football. Yeah, after playing pretty average against the Chargers, they've come back and played pretty well. Yeah, he uh, he was average. He didn't turn the ball over against the Chargers. He's just by his high standard. Uh, Pappas is sitting there. Looks like he needs to say something about the Chargers. Uh, Uh, Mahomes is a jerk. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Herbert, I think, looked a bit human, and then he threw two picks, so Mm. Mm. um, didn't help them help them late, but. He's um, a rookie. He's, he's doing rookie. all he's right. He's um, doing all he's right. He's starting this week yeah. again. Tyrod's still out. Who were they playing, Pappy? The uh, Chargers. Buccaneers. Oh, the oh, Buccaneers oh. this week. Yeah. I was like, oh, I'm drawing <laughs> blank. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, but well, just hard challenge it. for them. Nah, nah, nah. The Buccaneers are overrated. <laughs> Got a grandpa for a quarterback. True. Still well, seems to be throwing all right. Well, they got Gronk finally involved. Yeah, he um, got involved. Would he get five week? catches, I think? Uh, something like that. Yeah, after having one catch in the first two weeks. Mm. Mm. So their, uh, their run game still needs a lot of improvement if they're going to challenge the Chargers D. The Chargers D has been solid. They're losing yep. uh, losing men like flies in the secondary. I think Melvin Ingram's gone. He got hurt. So yeah. He's done for the year. Yep. Sorry, Pappy. It's that Never kind of mind. year. You can join me and wallow in the pain of all the people getting injured. Oh, no, we're still better than the Broncos. We'll, we'll see, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully we can have a competitive game. We get to play each other twice. So. Hey. Yeah. hey, there's two solid wins for the Chargers <laughs> this year. <laughs> <laughs> the day just got better. Uh, so go what through the Sunday games, James. Who who else played this week? Well, what about uh, the probably uh, two of the best teams in the NFC meeting on Sunday Night Football, the Packers and Saints? Saint, oh, cracker game. Saints got out to an early lead, mm. and then that Green mm. Bay offense just keeps rolling. The yep. Third game in a row, they've scored over 30 points. Mm. Especially with Adams out. They st- yeah. That, st- still re- reeled them in, scored yeah. points. Alan Lazard stepping up. I left him on my fantasy bench, and he mm. went out there and had a bit of a day. Um, and, yeah, they they just look really good on offense. Rodgers hasn't turned the ball over yet in three games. Yeah, so bad mm, man. Yeah, mm. pack pack three and zero, and Packer Saints 3-0. are now one and two. One and two, yeah, with losses against uh, the Packers and Ra- Las Vegas Raiders. And then the Raiders looked very human um, against the Patriots. Sure did, yeah. But so mm. the Pats looking looking good. Belichick get, flexing get there. Cam uh, looking good running the football. I don't know because Waller and uh, Jacobs were both both hurt through the week. So whether um, they went in there with a few niggles, I think Waller they held him. Um, to quite a low tar- mm-hmm. targets and catches for the game. Um, what about that, what about weapon. that Patriots defense with half their guys sitting out for the co- for the COVID? They've yeah, been stepping up, still stepping up. Yeah, it's been up. Well, that goes to show the system that they run out yeah, there. Yeah, the Pat system's great. And when you got Steph Gilmore out there going to the best receiver, it makes a difference. Yeah, and with uh, with Cam there, I think it gives a bit of personality that the Patriots have kind of lacked because you've got. 
uh, pretty boy Tom for so many years just says the right thing when he's in front of the camera and Bill Belichick <laughs> is like pulling water from a rock. But having someone like Cam there I think is a great thing for the Patriots organization. Oh, I don't think Cam I've is had, loving it over there. I've had a big smile suspended on my face for the last 10 seconds. Are you saying that Cam <laughs> Newton is not a pretty boy? <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen him rock up to the uh. – to the, Post game presses. Not, not a fan of the dreads. He's fresh. His haircut is uh, is oh, so he's fresh, but he ain't a pretty boy. <laughs> all right, all right. I see where, well, <laughs> I would I would have described Brady as clean cut, clean cut. Okay, look, you you will go ape shit over anyone that's oiled up and not a football <laughs> field right now. So, uh, <laughs> including probably Cam Newton. <laughs> let's uh, l- let's narrow the focus a little bit because it's uh, you'll take anything at right, right now. <laughs> What were the other games? What are the other results, James? Uh, um, well, what are, well, staying in the AFC East, what about the leaders of the AFC East, those Buffalo Bills? Josh Allen is looking like a quarterback. Especially mm-hmm. after losing John Brown early in that game too. Mm-hmm. Um, Stefan Diggs had himself a day. They, they, I think they win the AFC East. Mm-hmm. I know it's early. Well. I know it's early. Well, We've just been talking the praise about the Patriots, but... Well, they will definitely be competitive with the Patriots, and it's probably those two. Well, yeah, there. those other two teams are garbage. Uh, Jets and Dolphins, for those that are unfamiliar with the NFL. How do you feel with being a New York fan at the moment? True. Pick another, <laughs> go to a different city, <laughs> city pick another. Go right to Buffalo. Buffalo's in Buffalo. New York. Yeah. We claim them in, as the best team in New York. Um, for a terrible team to watch, though, Miami is fun. How, how so? How do you mean? They're being competitive. Mostly because of Ryan Fitzpatrick, and that man is amazing. The beard. Fear the beard. <laughs> the beard that, that, that merges yeah. into chest hair that is uh, being unleashed on every interview possible. <laughs> that man is hilarious <laughs> on and off the field. Well, they're coming off a big yeah. win against the Jacksonville Jaguars in uh, mm-hmm. Thursday and last Thursday's toilet bowl game. Yeah, we thought mm-hmm. uh, Jags might have done a bit better. <laughs> Thursday night football, they very much has become the the toilet night. The, they've had garbage games because they, they there's a toilet night. People got to be up early for work and school yeah. the next day. Well, they, I don't want to be staying up late watching <laughs> Packers and Saints on a Thursday night. I don't want to be watching the Ravens and Chiefs on a Thursday night, <laughs> even though they played Monday. I want to be falling asleep a quarter of the way in watching the toilet bowl. Well, you, well <laughs> you, you've got you got Denver Jets this week. You had it's um, such a crap. <laughs> yeah, you had Dolphins, Dolphins, Jags the week before, yeah. and then you had the Browns yeah. versus Bengals the week before that. Yeah, uh-huh. it is the toilet bowl. But the first, the first game of the toilet year, toilet Thursday, Ch- Chiefs and uh, te- Texans. It was first. Okay. That generally, you know, you need something to get the guys interested, and then yeah, first it, game of the year is a bit different. Yeah, every garbage game from yeah, uh, week, week two to week sixteen, just get it out of the way on Thursday nights. Yeah, trademark pending Thursday night toilet bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, we thought the Jags might have done a bit better in that game, and the Dolphins kind of rolled over them. So yeah, yeah. Uh, the Jags, you know, went out and beat the Colts for week one. Everyone said, "Oh, maybe they're not going to yeah, be as bad as, as they, we they won the following week." And Minshew was doing all right, but nineteen of twenty he had in week two, yeah, and but fell over against the Dolphins. Just couldn't get anything Min- going. Minshew he, is the new Ryan Fitzpatrick. Sometimes you get Minshew mania, <laughs> and then <laughs> sometimes you get Minshew that deserves to belong in a garbage bin. True, it's mm. confidence. But he's still only on about what. 14 NFL starts, something like that. Yeah. So Gardner's still, you know, very young in oh, his if, career. If he's going to he's gonna go missing some yeah. some nights and the, the old Jacksonville offense was missing on Thursday night. Yeah. What are some of the other results, James? Oh, Tip number three. Well, what Shut a, up, Peppy. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I've just we're got, all over the place. I don't know what we've talked uh, about. Well, I've just got one that just comes to mind because I sent a little tip through to the boys on a Friday. I think I'd looked at uh, oh, yeah. sports Let, bets. Let's talk about Giants 49 Sports <laughs> bets. Oh, Sean knows what I'm talking about. I said, geez, those Giants are looking a bit juicy at two dollars fifty. The 49ers are missing half their team. Yeah. It's still in, garbage. It's in New York, and 49ers they, didn't need half their team. They <laughs> were horrendous, the New York Giants. Daniel, I feel J- bad for the Giants. Daniel Jones, he's just. I, I thought this might be his come out year, but I'm just not saying it. He, he threw uh, a pick. He got sacked a bunch, uh, and those 49ers went out there with Nick Mullins and just rolled, just rolled on offense. And Jimmy G still. Uh, limited, I think, in practice, so he's still coming back. So maybe it'll be another week of Nick. The way, the way that he played on the weekend, I'd be yeah. fine to Kittle's roll with back Nick. this week as well. Yep, yep. Um, but yeah, the the New York team's just competing for who's the worst New York team. Yeah, and trying yeah. to outdo each other. And with hold my beer, 
Whew, imagine being a citizen of the great city of New York. That was hot. Sorry, New York. Uh, Pappas, can you help me, Eddie? No one can help that accent. <laughs> <out>. <laughs> yeah, I'm from the Bronx. I'm from New York. Is that better? Is that better? That's actually getting better. Well, yeah. Thanks, thanks. Yeah, the, I can't say much about them Giants. Them Jets, no good either. Uh, that's about as <laughs> you lost it towards the end. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I forgot what I was saying with this bad accent work, but uh, they're, they're both. Well, uh, you, your your tip still the, better than both bet, of the football bet the teams. house on the New York Giants. I didn't say the house. I didn't say the house. I, didn't, I said the wife. A sneaky ten. I said the wife and your least favorite kid. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they, that was a horrible tip, and I'm glad I didn't broadcast it live to the interweb. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so attempt number four. What about some other um, games? James? Who else do we have? So we had Cincinnati and Philly going to overtime. They drew in overtime. And Philly are bad. Philly are bad. Yeah. <laughs> Surprising. Yeah. I th- well, thought they might yeah. have been pushing Dallas for the um, NFC East. They're, they're crap. I, I don't know what's going on with well, Winston. Like, what's, what's the with go? With Wentz, well, he's, two, he's thrown two picks in each, each game. Is he gun shy? He's worried about getting hurt or something, maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Who's their backup there? It's no longer Nick Foles. No, they don't have, no idea. They don't have Big Dick Nick to come in and save him. I wonder if they're uh, regretting letting Nick Foles go and picking Wentz over Foles. Yeah, maybe oh, you had to you had to pick Foles. Went, but Wentz looks so good early in his career. It's three games. Maybe we're looking into it too much. And but. Wentz himself has said, "Hey, we'll be okay." Yeah, mm, mm. but maybe that's just because he's betting on versing a New York but, team twice in the year and so hoping they, that the Washington the, football team. Sucks. Yeah. It's a favourable mm. draw, isn't it? Giants and football team twice. You but know, someone in that division has got to make it to the playoffs. So, uh, again, though, drawing, <laughs> drawing with the Bengals, though, it's not yeah. great. No, yeah. that's not. That's not. So, what are their own two and one? Now? Oh, two and one, both those teams, yeah. yeah. So, the backup for Wentz is Jalen Hurts. Oh, yeah. Hurts oh, yeah, he's a rookie. rookie. Oh. Good in college. Played, yeah, played but more, more of that scout back kind of um, yeah. quarterback. But mm-hmm. how mm. long does it have to be for the Eagles to get a win before we see a Hurts? True. They might think, oh, well, well, we'll start on our Lamar project a little bit earlier. Yeah, mm-hmm. I reckon if they if it gets around, you know. If they're 0-5, then yeah. They're probably if they're 0-5, oh, Hurts has yeah. got to be in. So like Philadelphia wins. will riot again. Yeah. 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 Right when they win, right when they lose. It's um, a rough city to get involved well, that, in. And if he does well, then they might move Wentz. So, again, another interesting scenario. Jump, well, jumping ahead, but they are versing San Fran this week as well, so it's another tough matchup for them. I don't think they win that. No, they're not going to win that. Even with yeah. uh, half of the 49ers teams mm. out. Yeah. yeah. Uh, who else? Um, what are the other games? Week three? So we had Indianapolis smash the Jets. Jets. Poo. Jets poo. Yeah. Um, Detroit and Arizona. Detroit won 26-23. Bit was of an a, upset. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Murray kind of looked a bit human. I think he threw three picks. He did, so, yeah. Or he's, four, maybe. He, he I, think, a, I think three. three. Yeah. He had a bad day. He's looking mm. good running the ball, but, that yeah, that accuracy is a little, leaving a little yeah, bit. Yeah, and both Kirk and Hopkins are a bit banged up at the moment, mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. having some limited days of training. But, yeah, to Lions, yeah, they're a middle-of-the-pack team. They can surprise you occasionally. We thought cards might be better, but I'd say low, yeah, even possibly closer to lower the pack for the for the Lions. But yeah, that game that you'd think on paper the Cardinals should have won that oh, game. They still got Stanford there flinging it around, so they're going to be competitive. Stafford, Stafford, sorry, yeah. uh, Stanford is a college in uh, close enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all right. Um, yeah, else? anything um, else? The other one. I think don't think we've covered yet is Dallas and Seattle. Seattle, ah, this, Dallas. That was a good this would be just about a game of the round. Yeah, yeah it definitely was. Th- th- those offenses took the overs, and overs was right. Yeah, well, yeah. Was it? It was sixty nine points in that game, wasn't it? Thirty eight, thirty one. Yep, that's it. The overs were about fifty three. So yeah. yeah, good tip, boys. We got that one. <laughs> um, one. Yeah, that's right. Um, so hockey's one. Yes, if I remember correctly. Yes, thirty eight, thirty one. Yeah, yeah. Both uh, teams look good, pretty good. I on the, on the offense, offense. Uh, defensively, yeah. both those teams don't look like they can really stop anyone. Um, but I think the Cowboys win that division, as we alluded to before, in the NFC East. And then Seattle in a stacked NFC West are looking good. And Danger Russ Wilson mm. on track for an MVP type year. He's thrown oh, 14 touchdowns through three weeks. Definitely. And the one, I think one pick. 
I'm call, I, I'd go as far as to say that I reckon they're the best team in uh, the NFC right now. I would have them and the Packers on the same. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll be a good game. When do we have the Pack versus the Seahawks doesn't this year? Ha- uh, doesn't Is it on the draw? Oh, maybe. Just I'm not sure. Search uh, maybe for Seahawks draw or Packers draw. Because whilst we're searching for that, if history bodes well, it is always something exciting to watch when the There'll Pack some great games get together with the Seahawks. Yeah, that yeah. Hail Mary mm. a few years ago, Ooh. the last yeah. play of the game. Absolutely. Mm. Mm. They're going to definitely be a good game. Playoff football do, between do they meet? Well, it, they, I think they will meet it, but is it the playoffs? Do they have a, have a uh, crack at each other in the regular season? So I know one team we haven't covered, Minnesota. Who would they play? They played the Titans, Titans, Titans in the COVID-affected game. The COVID now. Now, yeah. uh, yeah. yes. Lost, Titans won. So I think Minnesota and I were in three. Yeah. Too, so which, really struggling. Yeah, and, and uh, no one would have really picked that. They've lost a few close games as well. Mm. Their defense is just not where they thought it would be. And no. their approach to play good defense, run the ball, is not going to work when you can't play defense. And when Cousins, I believe, throwing six picks yeah. through three games and he's on the same uh, – He's struggling at the moment. Yeah, same page as Carson Wentz. So it'd be interesting if they get Jefferson a bit more involved in that, which would be good. Yeah, he'd look really good. Yeah, yeah, good first round pick. So get him more involved. Maybe add, open up that offense a little bit so they can run the ball a bit more. What other, did we miss any other games, James, from last week? Um, no, I think we're covering Wall off. Did you find that? Did we talk about Washington, Cleveland? No, we didn't. Do we need to talk about Washington and Cleveland. Probably not. <laughs> Cleveland look good. Cleveland, Cleveland, yeah, beat. Wash, um, yeah, Washington, thirty-four to twenty. Mm-hmm. So there's talk about um, how long they're going to keep Haskin as in a quarterback for them. Already, but, yeah, already. Mm. Who's, he, that? Who's backing him up? Well, Alex Smith's there, I'm but not he's sure. not. Well, he's a, he's been cleared and everything. He's been mm. training. I don't know. He's def. I don't think he's been active at all. But. Mm. Maybe. It would be heartwarming to see Alex Smith Oh, man, back can the, you in, imagine in, if they turned yeah. that team over to him? Well, for any of our Aussie listeners that aren't familiar with the story, uh, he's been in the league 15 years. He was a former number one pick and absolutely shattered his uh, tibia, uh, in his shin bone, um, mm. to the point where he there was actually talk that they might have to amputate his yeah. leg. Infections and all that. Yeah, is infections. Really I think he had 20-odd surgeries on it. And yeah. uh, he's, he's made, made a full recovery. and the, He's it, 30. He's the same age as Rogers, isn't he? Or a year younger? Well, he was drafted in 05, so 15 years. And he must have been 21, when, 22 uh, when he got he, drafted. Pro, he, it depends if he was a senior or not. He might have been a little bit older. I'm sure a Google search. Is I think he's 38. I think he's 36. I think he's younger than Rogers. Mm. Right up there, but, you know, he still wants to play. and yeah. Um, he he was doing all bits with that Washington team before he got hurt. Yeah, he's yeah. Um, then they took Haskins, of course, um, because he did get hurt. Mm. Uh, but Haskins has um, started off pretty slow this year. Um, hasn't been doing over much for that team. Um, so it'd be interesting to see because I've got someone else there. Um, Kyle Allen. Yeah, that's the one. Ah, uh, yeah, so he yeah. was at um, Carolina last year and actually mm. looked really good um, with Cam's injuries. So. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So whether they turn it over to him to run it around. Um, what are they doing? Is Alex on their active roster at the moment? Yes. So yeah. Alex is the third, third yeah. string. Mm-hmm. So they'd most likely hand it over to Kyle, mm. and then mm. probably work Alex. They probably yeah. They probably don't want to risk it. Alex out there. And no. I think it's it's probably no. Alex's decision to make. Like, do you yeah. ask how confident you're going out there? And by sounds of it, knowing he, with all he's done, like, he'd want to be out yeah, there. Yeah, oh, hundred exactly. percent. If you're active yeah. on the team, you're yeah. going for that spot. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Just quickly while we're on that game, and I've got him in my fantasy team, Odell Beckham oh, Jr. Jr. is – should I be worried about him? He, like, we're talking about three years ago, one of the most exciting wide receivers in the NFL and probably the most able to take spectacular catches. He just hasn't done anything in Cleveland. What's going on? I, I think he doesn't want to play for a garbage team is probably a better way to put it. Well, I think so. Where's the effort? Looking at his mm. Instagram as well, it seems like there's uh, could be some motivation issues. Um, and Baker hasn't been <coughs> quite what they would have hoped for um, out of him now. And he's, th- he's in his third year, Baker? Yes. Yes, I think yeah. he's in his third year. Yeah, and just accuracy just seems to be an issue. 
Um, Started real hot. Ongoing, high. yeah. Had a bad year last year. This is his third. So. And with the running game that they've got, their running game is good. With Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt, like, just ripping off big runs, scoring heaps of touchdowns, you'd think with that running game they'd be able to pass, like, football, mm, play, open, play action. Yeah, it should, should be on. Because I, I think Landry hasn't been doing Landry's done nothing, no. Yeah, like, yeah. Of, which means it boils down. It's, it's Baker. He's got to be doing something more because yeah. those guys, they should, well, they should be getting open. Mm-hmm. Um, there should be opportunity for them to make make some passes. So. Mm. And I don't think Austin Hooper's done much for them in the tight end. No, end. Like no. they don't. They just. I don't know. It, yeah, it's. it's typical, I think it all. Typical it's, Cleveland. It's just the typical Browns. It That's happens true. every year. There's some hope, and then yeah. you just realize they've been through how many general managers, how, how many, many coaches every single year changes hands. Mm. They. Re- yeah. They're in a forever rebuild phase. Talent, talent goes to die in Cleveland. That he, said, they are two and one. True. <laughs> He's in a bit of a tough spot. He's your primary receiver. You call him primary receiver for Browns? Oh, 100%. Yeah. What yeah. they've got, yeah. yeah. So got he's, he's always going to be targeted. Yeah. And Well, by the defense, and he's got Mayfield passing to him. Mm. But so. remember, he was a superstar yeah. in New York. Uh, with, with Eli towards the end of his career. And like, no running back no, to note. No running back. But you got to remember, Eli, ve- long term veteran versus Baker is in his third year. Yep. So against against Washington, he got targeted six times. And he had four. No, no, no. He had four receptions. Uh huh. Fifty nine yards. So it's not a. It's not a bad game, really. Yeah. But for him, it's probably subpar. But he's not getting the end zone. He's had. He's had that no. one in week two, which is a good catch and it actually they went back to review it and I was in oh you joking like they're gonna take this away from me at the one yard line but they, they gave it to him. But yeah last year he was very disappointing and I thought I'd roll with him again this year but I think he's disappointing a lot of people around the world. Like he's a he's a massive name, you oh, know big, big uh, even talent. over here in Australia and you know um people that, that aren't the biggest fans of the NFL, they're not die hard. A lot of people know the name OBJ, OBJ so hopefully he pulls his finger out. Who the Bears play this um, last week? Atlanta. Atlanta. Yeah. yeah, a big, big comeback from behind mm. victory there. So how about them Bears three and zero? And after even three and zero, they've benched their starting quarterback, and Nick Foles is going to start for them. Crazy, isn't it? That could be Trubisky's career. Well, it could definitely well be if Nagy um, you know, just saves his job, and if Foles plays well, mm. plays like Big Dick Nick from when he was back at the Eagles. Mm. Um, and he does well for them, then why would they not want to keep him starting? Because their jobs are probably on the line now, being their step fourth year there or third? Uh, third, I third, think. Yeah. Third, yeah. Like they, no, same no, as Mahomes. Yeah, he's yeah, it's four. four. Yeah, because they picked Mitch one. So mm-hmm. they, that was their pick. Um, doesn't turn out well for him. Poor Bears fans. Imagine that. <laughs> yeah. But they're doing all right at the moment, 3-0. 3-0. Um, that defense is nasty there. Always. Yeah, it's a good solid mm-hmm. defense. Mm-hmm. Um, beat the Falcons who are probably a bit of a garbage team defensively definitely yeah well, um, letting yeah. them back in we're having what was 17 points yeah well, uh, 15 I think it was we're saying before the show um, just in the, our uh, pre-show chat uh, the Falcons have become the first team ever to blow 15 point lead in the fourth quarter in consecutive weeks um, feel for the Falcons fans I and feel for blokes that had money on the Atlanta Falcons. <laughs> oh, me. <laughs> um, yeah, just just blew a, a lead again. And uh, they're 0-3, aren't yeah. they? Here's a simple bet. Mm. You don't bet on the Falcons to win. You just bet on the overs because they score lots of points. They do. Bet on the passing yeah. yards over. Uh, yeah, definitely. Passing yards, definitely. Do the Falcons start to adopt a different strategy and just well, they're meant don't to, score first? They're meant to be a defensive team. They've got Dan Quinn there. He's a defensive coach. He was really good at the Hawkeys. That was his whole thing. And they've been garbage on that side. What of players have they got on that? Like Keanu Neal's pretty good safety. They had Beasley who had one good year, but he's gone. He's, gone he's now. at Tennessee. Yeah. Um, that that um, Adrian Claiborne who had a bunch of sacks a few years yep. ago. He's he, he's gone. Yeah, I don't know. Um, if he's playing corner for them. They got Fuller for them. No, uh, I know they had Trufant there for a while. Yeah, yeah. I think. Yeah, I really like. I couldn't tell you. Yeah. yeah, many many players on the defensive side of the ball for them. Yeah. All starts with offense for them, and mm. that's what's been keeping them in game, scoring lots of points. But yeah, their defense has been very, very average. How many times has Julio gotten in the end zone this season? 
Bye bye. Is it his donut? It needs this one. Yeah. How does this happen every single year? <laughs> hey, arguably every single year, well, everyone he's says again. he's one of the best receivers in the league. How can offensive coordinators not schedule, uh, scheme a way to get him in the end zone? He, he might be the most physically talented receiver in the NFL. Yeah. Like, you look at the guy, he is an Athlete, like he's so fast, it's he's so big, he's got that spectacular catchability, and then the, just the last two years, just can't find it's, find that end. It's probably a combination of he's had the hamstring issues that mm-hmm. keep persisting. Mm-hmm. Yep, uh, he's probably being double covered a fair bit, and that's why most of the other blokes are getting okay, well, Calvin's, yeah, Calvin's having big games, and even Russell's that Ru- Russell Gage, yeah, he's games. going well out of the slot. Um, Hayden Hurst scored a bunch of touchdowns for them too. Yeah. Um, so they've got you know other options. So if you're going to go double him, then one of those other blokes can be open. Mm-hmm. But it just mm. screams to his character because you got the contrast of what's happening with OBJ in Cleveland. Mm. Obviously a rubbish situation yeah. for such a talented player, mm. but you know about it. It's on mm. his Instagram that he's not having fun. Uh, Julio worked hard. Julio, all you see of him on Instagram is coaching up these younger receivers, like yeah. giving him tips. Now OBJ probably does that too, but. You don't you don't hear that sort of complacency from Julio Jones. That's I think that's pretty incredible of his character. Yeah, mm. to just like getting in there doing the hard yards. Yeah, he's a team guy, isn't he? he yeah, he doesn't mind getting all those yards, getting them up the field, and then letting one of the young boys get in there. Mm. I think I, I want him to score touchdowns more than he wants to score <laughs> touchdowns. Like I just want to see it. Yeah. But he's like, oh, no, no, no. I'm just doing my part. All right, James, do you want to run through week four games for us? Yep. So well, we talked about the the um, Thursday night toilet bowl. So That's you want it. to keep going? Um, before before I get onto that, Seahawks will not play the Packers until yeah. probably NFC Championships. I, I'll yeah. slap bet that. That's the game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, from what I'm saying, I think that's the game too. Can can the Saints so, so far three three weeks in yeah yeah can the Saints yeah, turn things around can the Bears stay relevant I Doubt will it. slap myself if the Bears <laughs> stay relevant <laughs> you don't think Tampa Bay's got a shot t- 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 well Tampa <laughs> yeah Tampa's probably sneaky third of them yeah right. Tampa could be up yeah. there they're getting better week by week they're getting a bit more chemistry slowly getting there um so after Thursday night we'll just run down the list so we got the Colts versus the Bears. In Chicago, Bears. tough one to pick. Yeah, ah, Rivers, Bears, Colts, Bears. Get them I'm going to say Bears go four and zero, but that's that's tough. R- to River, pick. Rivers is still struggling with what team he needs to throw the ball to. <laughs> They're both <laughs> blue right this week as well. Good <laughs> yes. shade. Um, and then we've got Jacksonville versus Cincinnati. Oh, oh I thought we covered the toilet bowl. Yeah, <laughs> this is the bidet, <laughs> the bidet bowl. bowl. Yeah, the bidet bowl. The trough bowl. Um, Just in case you didn't get some of the crap off on Thursday, <laughs> take a step over to the bidet and uh, give yourself a rinse. They're big in Europe. They should be implemented all around Australia. <laughs> if anyone's used one before, they're very refreshing. <laughs> uh, I'm going Jacksonville. I'm going Cincinnati. I don't really care. I don't care. Flip a coin. It'd be interesting to see Cincinnati come up, but again. Maybe another good game for Burrow to show what he's got. I want AJ Green to get in the end zone. That yes. man is, yeah. Yeah. Yes. That man has been injured. He's playing for a contract, so yeah. Yeah, we hope he does well. And he's a talented, talented guy, and he just seems to be getting yeah. consumed by these injuries. He's been out there. He's getting snaps this year, so I'd love to see him get in the end zone. Um, so this next one might be an easy pick. Cleveland at Dallas. Oh. Dallas, keep going. Dallas and give me the overs <laughs> again. That Dallas offense, yeah, oh, it that, depends what it is because nah, Browns that, might not score points, but yeah, I'll, I'll have a look now. That Dallas offense is fire. Mm. They're like like really good. They've probably got one of the best receiving cores in the league. Oh yeah, um, Dax slinging it. They got they, they got three first round picks. Yeah, at receiver. They, so. They've got <laughs> they got toe drag swag for days, and they their got, receivers highlight reels insane. They got one of the best offensive lines in mm. the NFL and running back, and the quarterbacks okay. So <laughs> they're they're pretty good. <laughs> they're pretty good all across the board. I'm um, just pulling it up here. So oh, daylight savings as well, boys. The game start at four a.m. this week. Just a reminder: set your clocks back. Um, not that you have to do that these days because the iPhone just does it. 
for you. <laughs> he totals in oh it is quite high, fifty six and a half. Yeah, I don't think they're gonna reach that. I don't think the Browns score enough points to reach that. I like yeah. I like where You're your head's relying at. Relying very heavily on the Cowboys. Mm. All right, um, tip of the week, unders fifty six and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Put that up on the whiteboard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's the next game, Jefferson? All right, next game, we got the Saints versus the Lions in Detroit. Saints for a bounce back. Yeah, I'm going yeah. to back the Saints to bounce back to here. Wouldn't they be – from Smart what I'm playing this week? Uh, I think he's, I think he's it, getting close. Yeah, he's listed as questionable at the moment. I know he wants to play. Because he, he, they could have put him on injured reserve this year, which is three weeks. You know how it's normally six weeks. Um, and he was adamant that he wasn't to go on injured reserve, and I think they just took his word for it. But if he misses this week, that's three weeks. So, so they, they could have, have could have saved and saved the cap room. So he'll be desperate to get out there because they've been struggling. Like Sanders hasn't been getting open, mm-hmm. um, neither Smith. So they've kind of been struggling. Breeze, uh, we mentioned it last week. He's starting to look a bit old. Yeah, well, uh, Alvin was carrying that team last week. He had a huge big game. game, big game. So he's back at he's back at practice. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so hopefully he can play. Please, Mike, I need some. I need you, man. <laughs> <laughs> My number one pick, man. I need you. I miss you, boo. Um. I hope he doesn't come back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm versing Peps in fantasy yeah. this week, and uh, dude, I was having a look at your team. I like your team. My yeah. team is nice. <laughs> it's, it's nice. It's, it's really good. I think health is important. If you see, look at Stampson's team, he's getting smashed. Yeah, isn't half, he? half yeah. He, all his bench are all injured guys at the moment. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. Feel bad for you, Stampson. What's Draft the next game? Better. Speaking of which, Borat 2 coming out in, in a month's time. Bullshit. Is there another one? Borat 2. Uh, yes, we heard about that. Um, I just heard Pappy before with his little, little accent. Really? Oh, I like I you. <laughs> I like <laughs> your sex. It's a nice. I, know that, nice. I knew they were filming the next movie. I think right. it's coming out on Amazon or something like that. We're going to get, get, uh, uh, get the video yes. live for these podcasts because uh, Pepsi looks like a Borat at the moment. <laughs> he got the bigger mustache. <laughs> now he got the clock radio. <laughs> <laughs> All right, James. We digress. We digress. Okay, so next game is Seattle at Miami. Se- Seattle <laughs> by <laughs> a lot. What are the overs on that? <laughs> Again, we have, it might not be any good. Sixty. It might not be any good because Miami might not score very much. Mm. Next one. Uh, so next, next, this next game might be telling for Tampa Bay. So we've got the Chargers at Tampa. Bolt up. <laughs> of, course, of course you're going to go to the Bolts I'm not seeing much out of them to uh, impress ah, nah, 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 nah. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure about Herbert yet But we'll see Hey, I'm could going to Tampa is, uh, Have they got a full bill of health on their receivers? Is, is Godwin out this week? Uh, uh, he's questionable yes. last I, I checked he's, Yeah, I think he's It feels like they're always And, the likes, to be yeah. and Miller I think is questionable right. as well Possibly. Scotty Miller, keep an eye out at him because I think we mentioned him earlier. little short slot, yeah. He's yeah, good. he's a little short white guy in the slot for a Tom Brady offense. <laughs> Allah. Future Hall of Famer. Wes Welker. <laughs> Allah. J- Julian Edelman. He uh, he could be one to watch. Scotty Miller. Mm-hmm. All right, next one. Next one, we've got Baltimore at Washington. Baltimore need a bounce back. Bol- should, should smash them. Baltimore by a lot. But wouldn't it be good if the Washington Football Club beat them? Team. Uh, football team. <laughs> <laughs> football team. Oh, my gosh. Sorry. How dare I get the name of a team with no name wrong? Uh, TBA. Yeah. Ravens. Ravens. With with Ravens. Ravens. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, so then we've got the Cardinals at the Panthers. Again, mm. another game that the Cards should win, but I'm not convinced after last week. Yeah, the well, Panthers are over three, aren't they? Well, no, they beat the Rams. They, 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 they beat, beat the beat Chargers. Yeah, we, uh, we right. didn't talk about that, and I didn't yeah. bring it up. <laughs> yeah, uh, they've uh, they've Mike got Davis more of an right. offense without Mac uh, uh, Christian McCaffrey than Seems I expected so. them to. Yeah, to have. Mm-hmm. they're pretty much running the same offense, and they got Mike Davis, Davis in there, yeah. and he's catching a bunch of balls. Yeah, he's filled they're, in quite nicely. For they're using yeah. some receivers in the running game as well. Mm. Mm. They're mm. being creative, given they've lost their superstar. Yeah. Indeed. But, It'd be an interesting test for Matt Rule. See how they go over there. Mm-hmm. Um, he's probably made. He chose to get rid of Cam, so maybe a poor decision in hindsight. But we'll see what Teddy does. Cam's been good for Patriots. But I'm gonna go. P- I'm gonna tip Panthers. That's my tip. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. They but actually, we, yeah. Cards need a good bounce back after last week. They played. I'm pretty going bad. Cards. I reckon the. Cards I hope will Cards find have a, a good game. One of the closer ones for the week. Yeah. Should yeah, be a good competitive game. 
Definitely. Um, so sports sports bet has Carolina at two fifty six, Arizona at dollar fifty one. Oh, I think that should be favourite, but I think that's really good money for that. Bankers. Is a good deal uh, on two teams that are desperate to prove themselves. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm. Um, so after that, we've got uh, the Vikings at Texans. Now this game's query may not go ahead because the Vikings played the Titans. Well, I think the um, no Minnesota have tested all clear, so I think they're fine. Okay, all right, they're they're okay, um, but Minnesota probably doesn't want this game to go ahead because they are garbage. Yeah, they uh, <laughs> well they lost by a point. They lost the by a point on the weekend, and they, we'll they have lost week. lost games uh, this year by not a lot. But they've been mm. underwhelming. Like a lot of people were saying that. Well, so so are the Texans. So it should be a good close. Yeah, competitive that's true. Game. That, both these guys are on three. I think. Texans and Vikings. Yes. Yeah. I think they both are on three. Should be better. Texans should mm. be way better. Mm. Their defense is letting them down. They've got enough weapons on offense if they can get it synced up. Mm. But their defense is I think they're struggling to let get guys go. open. Mm. But mm. yeah, yeah. They, interesting game. We'll see who can kind of put it together and win that one. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Um, so after that, we've got New York Giants versus LA Chargers. I mean, Los Angeles. They're, they're playing the Rams. Los Angeles Rams. Rams. I think, and I think we forgot to Rams. mention them before. The Rams are 3-0. Three and three and yeah. They lost to mm. the Bills. Ah, that's right. They're 2-1. Yeah. They're 2-1. They're 2-1. They're, two two and one. One. they're, two and one. they're not 3-0. Jo- yeah. Josh, Allen, uh, Josh Allen brought them ba- brought the Bills back on a game-winning drive. Yes. Mm. Yes. And uh, and stuck it to the uh, the Rams last week. So, mm. uh, saw loss for the Rams, but I mean, they're playing New York, so they're going to win. Yeah. Rams should be. Mm. Rams or Ram. That's it. Um... So after that, we've got the Patriots against the Chiefs. Should be a good Kansas. game. It's in Kansas. So from what I saw on the weekend, I think Kansas does it easy. Uh, but mm. Patriots have looked better than people were expecting in a year where half their defense sat out. And yeah, let's and see. Let's no see what Tom Bill Brady. can. Let's see what Bill can do against the Chiefs. But you know, the last game was such a Patriots way to win. They've set up Rex Burkhead having a massive game. So well, this both and Shani Michelle, they all had big games. So Shani Michelle did it right, but, but the way Burkhead that they did it in the end zone three times. Yeah, and so watch Burkhead do absolutely nothing against the Chiefs. And <laughs> yes. I swear, this is just a Bill Belichick strategy. You know, he's in the play in the in the office going, oh, you know, we're gonna uh, wreck the Chiefs. We're gonna put Rex Burkhead out there <laughs> for a lot, and then do fucking nothing with him next yeah. week. That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> who who picked up Rex the other day? Uh, Me. <laughs> <laughs> bold, bold, because bold, bold strategy. He, he, he's the kind you. of guy that'll score three touchdowns and then have three touches the next week. Yeah, yeah. So Sony Michelle I'm had, leaving him on the bench. You heard it here yeah, first. Yeah, Sony Michelle, I think had nine touches for 119 yards. So they pretty handy average. Mm, they had a, a pretty good on game day, day on the ground. There we go. Got it out. Spat it out. Yeah. Kansas City Chiefs, uh, dollar thirty in that game. I yeah. think that's the safest Safe money. Safe pick. Yeah. yeah. Should be. Let's see. What interesting game. I'd be interested to see where the Patriots do against them. I think the I think the Patriots would be respectable, but I don't think they win. Yeah. Agreed. It'd be interesting to see how Cam plays because he's a very emotional player. If if they start falling behind, it'll be interesting to see how his mood changes and if that affects his play and how mm. that affects the team in the coming weeks as well. Mm, mm, for um, sure. Because that's think definitely a lot of what happened at Carolina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was one of those real momentum guys. Yeah, well, yeah big time confer- uh, confidence guy. Yeah. The, yeah. Whole, the whole dabbing thing is what took him to a Super Bowl in 2015. So. <laughs> <laughs> if, uh, if Carolina, c- uh, sorry, if the Patriots can keep it close, I think that the Patriots will be with a shot. And I'm talking about mm. close in the first quarter. If the Chiefs get out to a lead, They'll run away with it. Saturday, yeah. If it yeah. can stay close, they just need to be within one score. I think that the Patriots might surprise you. Mm. Mm. I think that if it's within one score in the fourth quarter, the Patriots take it. Yeah, the Patriots. Really? Don't, the Patriots bold. don't want to be ch- chasing points. So if it's no. close, yeah. they should be alright. Yeah. Keep going. All right. So after that, we've got Buffalo at Las Vegas. I think the Bills might go four and zero. Yeah, I'll pick Bills. Mm. You got to remember though, last time the Raiders were in their new stadium. Uh, albeit with no crowd, they did go out and play pretty convincingly against the New Orleans Saints, get that yeah. W. But that, mm. that, that Saints with no Mike Thomas and their two best players are a bit banged up at the moment. So I'm going to take Buffalo. We'll go Bills. The Bills. Yep. So then we've got Philly at San Fran. San Fran, we talked about that. Keep going. Yeah. So this one, we might not know when it's going to happen, but 
Pittsburgh against Tennessee. Mm. So the story on that, the three players and five coaching staff? Yeah, I think, I think it was eight total. Yeah, eight total mm. got tested positive for COVID and then they had in one. In the Tennessee Titans camp. In the Tennessee mm. Titans camp. They yep. had one more test positive, I think, a player as well. So let's take it to four players. They're not training. They're not going into the facility at the moment. It's all closed down. Um, I think the latest news is they're thinking of playing that game Monday, uh, Monday night. So there might be a bit of competition there against yeah. the ESPN Monday night game. Mm. Um, one day, what positive. difference does one day make? That's True. That's yeah. I think it's thinking. More, it's more testing. So as I yeah, said, they just testing. keep testing. Yeah. Or maybe so they can get a day of training in on Sunday. Yeah, possibly, yeah. Um, get in the facility so they can at least practice a little bit. Mm. Um, if, not, way, if not Monday, it'll be Tuesday. Yeah, it, thinking. it's what we're – Looking at it at the moment is this game's not going ahead Sunday. Yeah, yeah, it's, mm. it's definitely they're trying to postpone it at least a day or two, um, and try not to cancel it. It's an interesting matchup. COVID aside, the Ste- yeah, two good teams. Yeah, yeah Steelers defense against one of the best running games in the NFL. Mm. Two mm. big teams in the AFC. AFC, AFC yeah. Sorry. Um, could both be we're definitely both at the moment pushing for playoff berth? Yeah, both, you, but both three and zero. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so. So one of them's got a Take an L this week. Um, mm. In terms of picking it, I'm going to go Pittsburgh. I think their defense is real nasty. Mm. Um, I second that. Yeah. yeah, Steelers will get up on this one. Yeah, yeah I'm not. I'm, but, not, I'm but not so sure. I'm not confident. I'm not confident. Yeah, the Titans. Um, AJ Brown still banged up for them, and Corey Davis. I think's been had a few niggles. He's mm-hmm. pro- probably played, but a few niggles. Um, so not a huge amount of options in the passing game, which may make it a bit easier for the Pittsburgh Steelers' defense, mm-hmm. um, whereas that uh, Steelers' offense has got a lot of weapons. Mm-hmm. So I think close game, but maybe Steelers by a couple. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say Steelers just because the disruption for Tennessee. Like they're not going to mm-hmm. be able to yeah, prepare properly. Yeah, or preparation. You could always say the opposite you of could that. Say the it'll it'll um, steal the team together to then beat the Steelers. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I hate you. Hey, you know what? That's getting. Uh, you know what? That's getting. Uh, yes, <laughs> hit it. <laughs> Sorry, we're uh, still running in the Pepsi's old bedroom uh, studio off. Um, a few books. I've got the Australian Fishing Guide. Yeah. In front of me here. The old <laughs> mic drop. Yeah, the old mic drop. <laughs> knocking it over. Um, Monkey, you'll be able to edit that out. <laughs> yeah. what's, the ne- what's the next game? Last game for the week is Atlanta at Green Bay. Pack. Pack, yeah. You have to. Um, what are the overs for that one? <laughs> who, who, are the, who are the Bears playing? Um, the Colts. Oh, we talked about that. Good. Yep. Yeah. Right Colts starting. Again, overs fifty six and a half. So that's yeah, massive. So pack Falcon mm. on Monday and Titans Steelers game on Monday. Possibly TBC. Possibly competing against each other for prime time. I reckon they push that game to Tuesday. Could could do, or they won't show it nationally. It'll just be um, local mm. or on, online for those that stream outside internationally. Hey-oh. Or illegal streams for runups. All right, we should talk about another sport. <laughs> Can you tell we get passionate about the NFL? It's starting to heat well, up. A lot of teams, a lot of games, a lot of news to get through. Indeed. Um, but, yes, that's the NFL chat for the week. Uh, we will move into the Formula One. Um, that's when I go for a piss. Yeah, perfect time for a pee, baby. <laughs> uh, just updating the Port Adelaide and Geelong game. The Adelaide are a bit out in front, 46-32. And I think that's the end of the third quarter. So, Muggy, Formula One. Oh, and Pappas, you love the Formula One, don't you? Yeah, I, I am about to hit the snooze button, though. <laughs> I, uh, it has been a day, and uh, yeah, the pillows are looking mighty fine right now. That's exactly how Formula One makes me feel, too. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are your thoughts, James, overall on the race? Uh, interesting. Um, again, another race that Hamilton didn't win. Um Losing a I, bit of his lead that he's built up as well. With a lot of races still in hand. No, can you argue no real fault to, for his for him to him though? Uh, he should know better. He should. He should. He did ask the question whether or not he could. So what happened was um, yeah, tell the story. during was it qualifying? No, there was the was formation lap. Formation so lap. Yeah, so yeah. as in they're going out to go hop on the grid. Yeah. So coming out of pit lane. Um, there's designated areas you can yes. do practice starts. So what he did was he did a practice start in the wrong area. So he'd pulled up to where you'd normally do the practice start. Mm-hmm. Um, 
He actually got actually got pinged for it twice. I don't know. I didn't see the second time. Yeah, I don't think they televised the second time, but I think it was actually further around on the track. He found some yeah. clear spots, slowed down, and did a practice start. So yeah. he did it in the right at the far end of the pit lane exit. So most of the other cars just go around yes. him easily. There was, there's a nice and long uh, bit there, so they could get around him easily enough. But yeah, he did practice start there, yeah. and then so they did another one, I think, somewhere around the course. The teams were told that they were allowed to do it as long as they kept far right. Mm -hmm. But he obviously must have not been in the right area. So they pinged him for Yeah, he was a bit close to that. Stop. And there were drivers that had to swerve around him as well. So yeah, I think yeah. the fact that there was a car that came a bit out around and yeah, sort of highlighted the fact to that. It was potentially just a a little bit of an arrogant moment uh, in he just thinks he can do what he wants. Because he gets that little bit of hot head sometimes. Yeah. Well, I think he pushes to his team his bit, and his team kind of said, oh, let's do it here, we should be right. Yeah. So I think it's both of them. It was um, definitely his team that gave him the, the order that he could do it. His uh, race manager would have definitely been involved in that. Yeah, so. So know. he got two five-second penalties, which he served all 10 seconds at his next pit stop. Yep. Yeah, so. That would have hurt. I did. It once. put him. Oh my well, gosh! How far back did he end up, man? He dropped a bunch. He dropped a fair way back. Yeah. So the argument for that though was, um, if they hadn't have served the penalty, they would have put him straight into traffic, um, and he would have had to fight, would have had to fought those cars up until the point that they made their pit stop. So they thought it would have been better for him to serve the two penalties, get out into some clear air. Mm. And then just let the rest of the race to continue. Yeah, to and he came, he came back up to third. Yeah, he finished third. third I think finished third. So yeah, Bottas, Verstappen, Hamilton. He was fourth. Uh, Ricardo was fifth. I remember. Ricardo was fifth because he got a penalty as well. Yeah. Um, Quite well, that that second corner was a bit interesting there, because um, after the long straight, so uh, the first lap after the, they start off the grid. Um, very long sort of straight down uh, through first corner. It's it's not a really big first corner, but then the second corner is a big, deep second corner. And they had... Um, yeah, oh, the right hander. Yeah, the right hander. They had the... say um, I think they were calling them the orange hot dogs. Yeah, The big yeah. ripple strips. But basically, so if you crossed over those, you then had to go through the, the runoff detour lane. But that detour lane actually was really close to the road, um, to the wall, sorry. There wasn't much uh, space. There wasn't much space. So you actually had to slow down a fair bit. So... Carlos Sainz um, has gone off on the that second corner well, there. Well, Verstappen went off first. True. So and he he was able to uh, slot through and rejoin um, fairly easily. But then yeah, a couple of positions behind him, Carlos yeah. Sainz went a bit hard through that corner, a bit quick, and then tried to he, cut the corner. Yeah, straight into the wall. <laughs> straight into the wall. Lost his um, left front and then flew back across. I think he even clipped his teammate Lando Norris. Uh, Lando came through to debris. So yeah. yeah. Um, he was a little bit behind him. Um, I think he nearly clipped one of the Ferraris, though. Yeah, or one of the. the, the yeah, it might have been Vettel, Vettel coming through. I think. Mm. Yeah. So, again, another big interesting incident to start the race. Uh, safety car for a couple of laps to clean all that up, um, and then it. they got away racing. Uh, it was a pretty good race. Uh, Ricardo didn't do too bad. Um, that penalty kind of pushed him back, uh, but he was competitive, and then. Uh, you know that Aussie flair. Yeah. Just ha I just need to drive faster. Got it. Got in front of his five second penalty. Um, finished, I think, eight seconds clear of, of Leclerc. So he maintained his fifth spot. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Um, but overall, again, another dominating race by Mercedes. Um, Verstappen best of the rest. That's it. Yeah. So so next week it's off to Germany, mm -hmm. or rather this weekend. Um, Is it back to Germany? Back to Germany. No, they're yeah. in Russia. Uh, they might have already had a race in Germany. Yes, I, mean. I think they've already had a race in Germany. Yeah, yeah. yeah. a lot of um, European races this year. Yes. Um, no, oh, they're the Nurburgring, aren't they? Yes, yes, yeah, they, they are. are. Um, Not the actual Nurburg, Nurburg that you think about. It's a dedicated race no, course off yeah. the side. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got that. Um, probably the biggest news out of that is Mike Schumacher, the son of Michael mm -hmm. Schumacher, is going to be... Um, running for Alfa Romeo in the practice sessions. Mm -hmm. I think practice one. He's been really good in Formula 2 as well. He's yeah. leading Formula 2 at the moment. Yeah. Did you um, see the big crash in Formula 2? Actually, yeah, I should probably talk about that as well. So it was, I think it was six, six or seventh lap in. 
Um, yep. Couple cars. I, I don't remember what corner it is, but it was the big long sweeping. Um, I think full, it's full it's, speed corner. It's turn three, so you got yeah. the first turn. Yeah, turn turn. That's the hot dogs, and then two. No, two is two's three. technically the Sorry, yeah. hot dogs, and then it's big long sweeping, which is three, and yeah. they side by side cars. One kind of I think wide, runs a little bit wide, hits the other one, puts them both in the wall. It looks like about, he ran a little bit about wide. About kilometers an hour. Yeah, ran a little bit wide. Looked like he lost the rear and probably in the marbles and. Yeah. Just tag the, tag the other guy. And yeah, um, off they went. Big so crash though. Big crash. Huge crash. They big actually event. red flagged and suspended that race. So yeah, they they didn't restart it. So yeah, yeah, had a bit of a clean up to do before the main race mm. for the F ones. But yeah, bit bit of a scary crash. But it also goes to the the new technology that they've put around all the circuits, um, not just tires they run into, but mm. actual barriers that have kind of absorbed all that impact and both guys walked away. Okay. 100%. Well, both those cars, the impact was so heavy that they went in underneath the first row of barriers. Mm. One car was absolutely destroyed, just mm. completely smoked. Um, but yeah, both drivers hopped out, walked away. Um, and yeah, very lucky to get get through that. So that's Formula One chat. Um, looks like they're uh, realigning some more fingers in the AFL. Yeah, Joel Selwood's definitely uh, <laughs> popped, popped his left middle finger by the looks. They've strapped it up. He's ready to go for the fourth quarter. Uh, Port led that game 46-32 to carry a 14-point lead into the fourth quarter. Mm. So moving on to some NBA talk. Mm. Uh we're in the heat of the finals. <laughs> oh, no. no. I'm not going to give you one on that because it's probably better, but that's still very bad. It's still garbage. Did, have you been thinking about them all week or no, is that off the no, cuff? That was off the cuff, that one. He's a dad now. Those, yeah, they those come dad naturally. jokes just come naturally. Yeah. They come naturally. Yeah, right. So Lakers versus Heat for the NBA Finals. Uh, the first game was today. The Lakers won that quite comfortably. Yeah, 16 points they ended up winning by. They did have a lead of up to about 24 throughout yeah, the game. Yeah, I think they almost got up to 30 at one mm. point. So, yeah. yeah definitely uh, big, big in front. Huge lead in the th- yeah, at the end of the third quarter. Yeah. It was really that fourth quarter. Where yeah, I think, it was 20, I think they led by 26 at the end of the third off the top of the dome. Yeah. Mm. Um, Tell you what, the the Lakers are going. They look good. It's theirs to lose. It's theirs yeah. to lose. I thought it, Heat might have been a bit more competitive after their run through their conference, but maybe their conference well, is a little bit weaker than we thought it could be. Yeah, we we were we were saying that you know whoever wins the West is going to win, mm. uh, and then it didn't help today that Jimmy Butler rolled his ankle. Yeah, I think one Bear, of the best players. Bear Matterboyor, I think missed out. Who's been unreal for them? Um, yeah, thought, they had a lot of backups in. So yeah. Um, and just just touching on Bam, I think last season I was having a look. He, he was uh, playing about twenty three minutes for ten points and eight boards. And this year he's been playing like thirty five minutes, averaging a double double with like fifteen points a game. And uh, big time improvement has been going nuts. I think he got thirty in that last game against Boston. So to lose him and to lose Jimmy halfway through the game, and I hope that their injuries. Don't yeah, carry through. Just minor to, and they can be healthy. Yeah, don't way. carry through to game two because otherwise this is, this is going to be an absolute whitewash. Uh, LeBron was LeBron. He nearly got a triple double. He missed it by one assist. Uh, big Anthony Davis had thirty points. Um, and then well, what was the story on Dwight Howard? Was he sat down for this game? No, no, he played fifteen minutes. He did play yeah, games. yeah. So he's just been coming off the bench. Um, you know, rotating in for AD mm. um, and and playing that that center role when. Pretty much as in a direct swap for AD, mm. um, but they're the they're Lakers, good squad. Yeah, the Lakers bench is good. They got Kyle Kuzma coming off um, the bench. Considering what they were two years ago, yeah, they've, they've yeah. done a good, really good job rebuilding. Well, it's not, Mo- I don't move, think there's many move. guys there that were there two years. Oh uh, yeah, ago. well, <laughs> they've moved on Magic Johnson as well, and mm. um, he's no longer the GM there, and they've kind of rebuilt their club very, very quickly. Mm. Is game game two Saturday? We got that. Uh, What's the yeah. yeah, probably yeah, Saturday. Sat- yeah. Sorry, Every so time. it's full Friday night um, over in the US, so Saturday uh, mid morning our time. Um, and from what we saw today, really, you think the Lakers get this pretty comfortably? Mm. I was having a look throughout the week. The Lakers and Celtics are eons ahead um, of the rest of the competition in terms of n- number of uh, NBA championships. championships? Yeah. Do you guys just off the top of the head? No, there's two teams that are tied on third. Can you have a guess at has 
as to who they might be. Uh, Chicago? Yes, Chicago. Six wins from six uh, appearances. They've never made a finals <laughs> and lost. There was a guy called Michael Jordan. I don't know if you've heard yeah, of yeah, him. Yeah. Name sounds familiar. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> not, he, not the biggest name. He <laughs> played in all six of those. And uh, then the yeah. other team might surprise you. Is it Pistons or? Pistons isn't a bad guess, but it's not Detroit. Uh, Who did Larry Bird play for? Boston, so they're oh, the Boston they're, so they're yeah, second. Yeah. So it's them. They're yeah. They're, 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 okay. yeah. Uh, I was. It's think, I was thinking think Sonic. Recent. Think recent. They've been no oh, good this year. Oh, uh, Golden State. Yeah, Golden State have actually snuck out to six. So well, I think yeah. think they've had yeah. three in the in the modern era, and they yeah. they yeah. had three from back in the day. So they're actually uh, sitting there on tied third. Um, with the Chicago Bulls, and then it goes down to San Antonio on mm-hmm. five, yeah, and then it yeah. starts to really thin out down there, mm-hmm. down the bottom. And there's like ten teams that have never won it, yes. which is pretty yeah. astounding. Uh, moving on, moving on. Just to, well to finish off the American sports, the NHL, uh, the Tampa Bay Lightning won the last game, so they won the series four yep. two, uh, won the Stanley Cup. There's one, one championship in Tampa Bay. Um, yep. I don't think there's Hopefully ever there's any snow more. or ice in Tampa Bay, but no, it's a pretty warm climate down there. <laughs> uh, I think in the ice age there might have been. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. That movie uh, day after tomorrow, did it get down there? <laughs> no, I think it's got a little bit of water around their ankles. <laughs> um I actually watched that game. It's I think Tampa just scored two two early goals and Yeah, finished finished uh two yeah, just really the game. just held on to that lead and didn't really let up. Th- they seem to uh, be the more dominant club uh, mm. throughout that final series, and the the oh, is it the stars? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Dallas Stars were just just man maintaining to stay um, with them. Mm. Took a couple of games to overtime, but yeah, in the end, yeah, Tampa Bay were just too good. It did take them six games to get there, but yeah, yeah, it's all right. And full disclosure, hockey is probably one of our weaker sports, so we'll be working <laughs> on that throughout the podcast and looking Next forward season. to the Next season, yeah. 2021-22 NHL season. Yeah. Oh, it's definitely an interesting sport to watch. We've just got to watch more of it. We should all get on a team. What do you reckon? Up the avalanche. Yeah, yeah staying in Colorado. <laughs> I like that. Monkey, you going to stay in Tampa? Or you can, you can well, jump on the lightning. He's already Actually, picking you, the winning team. Yeah, yeah. no. Um, I, or, or is there I someone will say like? Dallas Stars are my team. Dallas Stars? Yeah, they are my team. Uh, I watched them when I went, went over a couple of years ago. Uh-huh. And that's the that's the one NHL game I've seen. So, yeah, I'll go over the Dallas Stars. I'm not committing yet. There's a few guys that I like. I, I like the... I like the <laughs> Dude. I like the Blackhawks. I like the Bruins. I, I can't pick just yet. <laughs> Stay, I like the no, I like the name Canuck. <laughs> I can say Canuck off. So you can. yeah, interesting. That's Co- bad. So <laughs> my, my my understanding is a bunch of Canadian teams that play in the NHL, correct? Mm-hmm. Yes. yes. So I, how, how I come think Tampa six. and Dallas were in the finals? How, oh, well, it's well, like anything. It's, Why the Melbourne Storm, the uh, best Andrew. rugby league team mm-hmm. over the last few years? Uh, it's probably because there's a bunch of uh, cow, um. Canadians playing for both those teams. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, yeah. The, the guys that play for Tampa Bay and Dallas aren't necessarily from, from Tampa, Tampa Bay. Bay and Dallas. <laughs> In terms of Canadian teams, what have you, you got? The Canucks, you got the Calgary Flames, Toronto, Toronto Maple Leafs, yep. Montreal Canadiens, mm-hmm. Winnipeg Jets, mm-hmm. Ottawa Senators. I think there's six. Yeah, am I missing anyone? Couldn't tell you. We'll have to find out next season. <laughs> Just give us a quick Google search on right. NHL teams because there's six, and then that leaves they're, yeah. they're on 25 now in the um, US because there's th- an odd number, 31 teams with the Seattle Kraken coming in yeah. into the league yes. next Seattle year. Kraken. A Kraken, Kraken. It just might be a good team to pick up. Well, maybe you have to jump <laughs> on the Kraken. Just reminds yeah. me of Davy Jones and uh, the well, Pirates you, of the Caribbean. Alicia <laughs> Kraken. Well, every well, game they play, you got to drink some Kraken. So well, I, I could get around that. I think <laughs> uh, they play about eighty-two a year. So <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of Kraken. Sorry, Sarah. I'm just uh, supporting my Kraken. <laughs> She got to re- listen to more than ten minutes to get into here, but all right. Yeah, yeah. I could say all, anything I want. Right here. <laughs> <laughs> there is no chance. There is no um, chance. All right. So just for the benefit of all those who haven't followed the NHL before, mm-hmm. I'll just run through all the teams. Go and for you it. can yell out any Canadian team. So we've got Carolina ha- Hurricanes, mm-hmm. Columbus Blue Jackets, mm-hmm. New Jersey Devils. Go Devil! Maybe I'll go for the Devils. There's a Seinfeld <laughs> episode on them. 
New Jersey Devils. <laughs> Uh, all right, so we've got the New York Islanders, New York Rangers, Philadelphia Flyers, Pittburgh, Pittsburgh Penguins, like Penguins, Washington Capitals. Penguins were garbage this year, I don't know that mm. much. Sidney Crosby getting towards the end of his tenure. Mm. Um, and then we've got the Boston Bruins, Buffalo Sabres, Detroit Red Wings, Florida Panthers, Montreal Ca- uh, Canadians. Canadians, yeah. Uh, yeah, Ottawa Senators, Tampa Bay Lightning. Toronto Maple Leafs, Chicago Blackhawks, Colorado Avalanche, Dallas Stars, Minnesota Wild, Nashville Predators, St. Louis Blues, Winnipeg Jets, Anaheim Ducks, Arizona Coyotes, Calgary Flames, <laughs> Edmonton Oilers. Oilers, Los- I forgot Oilers. Yeah, there we go. Los Angeles Kings, San Jose Sharks, Vancouver Canucks. Vegas Golden Knights mm-hmm. and then the Kraken Seattle Kraken. Krakens. That that was seven Canadian teams, which is mm. very surprising considering like fifty percent of the NHL are Canadian born. I suppose it comes down to the market, you know, where the, the market the TV deals in the money. That's right. Mm. That's right. That's it. Right. Thank you, for that James. So moving on, uh, some rugby news. Do you guys hear what happened to South Africa? They've had enough. Mm. Cool. Out of the Super Rugby? Super Rugby. Super they, rugby. They're going to take the South African comp and take it New to Zealand, Europe. New Zealand wins too many times. This is exactly <laughs> what we were talking about last week. Yep. Yep. Um, I think it's good for the sport in Australia. Yes. Um, as to, as per I mean, last I mean, podcast, no one wants to wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning and yeah. watch them play. I think South Africa and Europe but that, makes That's a whole sense. conference of teams that Australia's not going to be – well, that aren't playing for Australia to beat. So Australia's only up against New Zealand teams now. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I still don't think it's a bad thing. I, no. I, they can make that comp a bit smaller, mm. uh, have all the games on in a good time, good time zone, yep. mm. um, and and maybe expand to have a, a team or, you know, a sixth team here in Australia. What's... What's the time difference between Europe and uh, South Africa? Aren't they in this quite close. Aren't they? Yeah, because it doesn't time zones yeah. go vertical, so they're in roughly the same sort of area. I think England might still be west of South Africa, Definitely. but yep. not much. I think South Africa might be in line with, say, Italy. Yeah. You got monkey. It makes that makes way more sense. Yeah. To play in Europe because then you can get more of those games. It's still a long TV flight. Time. It don't get. It's it is a, a long flight. It's still a long definitely. flight. Probably ten. Ten hours, but time but, zone but wise, time zone wise, yeah. they'd be in a similar time zone. Yeah. So, uh, so South Africa is in similar time zones with most of Europe. Yeah. Yeah. Makes way more sense. Uh huh. It does. And, and then they can push push that European league, so the French teams and the England teams, and try to well, lift them all yeah, up. Well, that'd be so. good for those European mm. teams to go play like some quality opposition. Yeah. Poor Argentina. Definitely. <laughs> we Don't got no cry <laughs> for me, Argentina. They've been forgotten. But uh, they can play Uruguay. That's about it. Oh, f- mm. That'll be exciting. <laughs> you still standing by your statement? Is rugby dead in this country, Sean? Uh, well, that's well, that's South Africa leaving. So again, that's maybe some money or TV deals gone. But maybe that overall, that's better for Australian. New Zealand's the Super Rugby, but again, it all depends. I still have no TV deal. This is maybe a blip on the heart rate monitor. Mm. They've just about gone, but every few seconds. Is yeah. you know. Let's just say it's the Boop. first good decision, but was it made by uh, the ARU or by no. New Zealand Rugby? No, it was yeah. South Africa doing something that's probably actually correct. Yeah. Good job. Yep. Well done. You Cephas. <clears throat> Moving on to the UFC. Oh, uh, how yeah, good. How good, yeah. UFC 253 on the weekend, mm-hmm. Israel versus Costa. Uh, great fight. Israel um, looked unreal, made Costa look uh, very human. Mm-hmm. Chewed, oh. chewed his leg up and Costa, I think they said that he landed one significant punch. Mm-hmm. Very very much, I don't want to say he was gun shy, but whether, you know, those leg kicks kind of took pushing a, forward. Not no, pushing forward. No, Maybe especially those leg in that second round. Yeah. No. I, I had out. high hopes for Costa. You know, I really thought, you know, if he could take him down, he oh, would have oh. been a, a real chance. But yeah. Israel just worked that left knee and di- it didn't look like Israel was ever in jeopardy 
yeah. of, of yeah. taking shots in that fight. Very much yeah. Costa as Just well. Just controlled it the whole Yeah, exactly. Fight. Costa yeah. was kind of in the middle of the ring, couldn't cut Israel off, no. get him up no. against the cage and... Didn't really even try to cut him off. No, yeah, exactly. no kicks to try and cut that. Yeah. Israel just stayed on the outside. And, and for Grai that that's talked as much as he did, you'd, you'd both of them. But especially from Costa's side, you'd think he should have gone for a takedown, or, or he yeah. didn't even really try. And all the showboating or, or and, push forward and trying to yeah, yeah. that that early showboating. I'm I'm kind of glad Izzy shut him up mm. and and spoke with his fighting. Obviously, there was pregame. You know, pre-fight. Well, there's, uh, there's a bit after it as well, getting in, a few humps into. Yeah, indeed, yeah, indeed. But uh, throughout that fight, Israel just controlled it, and he's starting to clean out the div- that division. Mm. So he has cleaned out the division. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah. so coming out of that was um, that storyline, of course, of the humping and Costa not being overly happy. Uh, there was talk that he was looking to go to heavy light heavyweight after this. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, there's, they're now saying, we'll put that on hold. Um, my single goal now is to smash Israel. So oh, maybe it cost a Costa Adesanya too. Yeah, well, let's, let's hopefully and hopefully be a better showing. Um, I think yeah. I think it, Costa might be too short to go to light heavyweight. It, like he's huge. He's huge. Yeah. He's huge at six foot one if or, that, if, already. Yeah. You know, in middleweight. If they had a 195, how, maybe. Yeah, how big would he have to be to go up and fight at 205? Like, oh, yeah. Look what happened to Weidman and Rockhold. They both went up and got smashed. Yeah, so. exactly. I, yeah. I don't see him go. Not after that performance no. in the league. I think, I think it makes sense to stay. So then Israel kind of put it on Jared. Um, how do you say his last name, James? Cannoneer. Cannoneer. Uh-huh. Um, to As the next favourite. But he's yep. got Whitaker coming up as the co-main in 254. If Whitaker wins that, then does he get... The right to go again at Izzy. I've, if you look at the names on that, he's got to be the next one. Yeah, I've, yeah. There's, he's, he's, he would then have beaten five, and then that makes Robert probably two because mm-hmm. Costa and Romero are three and four, and he's already mm-hmm. beat those two. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it makes the most sense logically. Um, there's some chat about whether they'd do that fight in here, Australia. Here, yeah, or, or in Auckland, or yeah. if they've got an arena that could handle it. The problem, though, was the two week. Um, Isolation at the moment they have to do to get over here, so mm-hmm. not overly cost effective and causes a lot of issues mm. logistically. So I think Dayan has kind of poo pooed that, but yeah, whoever knows because that fight's end of October. Um, and if they do and six months after that, probably so ma- it's middle of next year, ma- maybe. yeah. By maybe then, possibly. who knows? Who knows? But they you'd love to see it, yeah. The other story coming out of that was the talk about Israel's tit, the, the, the saggy tit. Um, now is this is there actual articles out there on the saggy tit or is this a Sean Gould? No, no, uh, there's, there's, there's there's a lot of people talking about uh, maybe he was doping and that's uh, why he's got some yeah um, some talk about maybe he tore a peck going into it, um, but you know very hard to fight like he did he with didn't, the torn back. He didn't so it's not like torn back. Um, I think the theory's come out that it was probably swollen, as in he's maybe during um, some sparring he's taken some a shot or a leg or something and it's just swollen up and it's mm-hmm. um, the muscles just flared a bit and make it a little bit saggy. Um, but, yeah, there, there was the saggy tit out there. Um, there's a lot of not overly impressive photos of the saggy tit. Yeah. Uh, you And you noticed it straight away when we were watching well, it live. It, it looked odd. So <laughs> yeah, it was sort of jiggling and around. My, I, my thought was maybe torn peck, like that the muscle doesn't look right. So yeah. There's something there. But how, I don't, I don't how, would, you, how would you tell – Tear your peck in a you know in the few days leading up to a fight. You'd be resting. You'd be cutting. It's yeah. not like you'd be out there. Well, maybe a week out, your last sparring session, you've maybe, done it. Yeah, maybe. And you just go in with a torn peck. But there's the way he fought and the way he threw it. There's no it way it didn't look fought. like. Yeah, he couldn't have fought that way with a torn peck. Um, and doping for Israel kind of doesn't make sense. No, um, <laughs> the bloke who was fighting probably makes more sense. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, let's let's just go with maybe it was just a bit of swelling, a bit of extra. Um, uh, pus or mass or whatever you want to say, they was just a bit under there and just made the tit look a bit saggy. I do wonder as well when they they cut all that weight and they they're playing around with their you know water content and ma- yeah, good another good point. Yeah, maybe something just sort of gets a little bit stuck. But uh, mm. definitely no doctors here tonight <laughs> on on, on the ski. It's all <laughs> merely speculation. Yeah, we just like talking about saggy tits. Um, <laughs> So the co-main for that was the light heavyweight championship. Um, Here we go, Sean. No, I'm not Come on, have, have a try. I'm have just going to say Jan won. So. <laughs> <laughs> Blachowicz, I think. Blachowicz. Blachowicz. Uh, so so uh, we were saying, I think, 
Blachowicz yeah. last week, which is our interpretation of that very difficult to say Polish name. Uh, but it seems like the commentators and the the lingo seems to be Jan Blachowicz yeah, so with a silent H. Yeah, so JB won that. Um, looked really good, JB. <laughs> 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 looked looked really good really against good. Dominic Reyes, who is really invented reinvented himself from a couple of years ago. Yeah, and those those high leg kicks that he was throwing, they yeah. just oh the upper like um what's what's un- the lower the sh- lower spot of the. Back shot about there. What was this? Like your uh, flank, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah just real in the side of the ribs. Though. Ribs, yeah, yeah, yeah. lower was, rib was, cage. Those high ribs just below. Yeah, the it just, bit, yeah. and there was an instant welt there. Yeah. And he, he probably really heavy leg. Probably kicks. tagged him about three times in that exact same spot on his right rib cage. Yeah, but it was, it was the did, hands. Does though. anyone know if he did he break those ribs? Does, does anyone know? No idea. But you know that w- wasn't the ribs that um, won him the fight. It was the big, heavy right hand. Mm. Um, put Reyes on his ass and mm. and mm. got it done. He's scary, man. Yeah. Well, obviously he's a world champion now, UFC fighter. I had a sneaky little ten dollars on him. I mm-hmm. thought, you know, I'd like it came I'd in like, as the underdog. Yeah, came in. He was paying uh, about three fifty. Mm. And he's a physical specimen. Is he so? Yeah. He's got that wide, big, wide shoulders. Yeah, shoulders and Eastern, the big lats. Eastern and European. Yeah, they, they don't make anything soft in Poland. <laughs> no, definitely. So that'll be fun to watch and mm. him, uh, you know, trying to defend his title. Yeah, I don't know who. He'd, who yeah, who's next up there? Hard to say. Maybe it's um, Thor. Thor's hammer. Um, oh what's, yeah. What's his name? I've forgotten now. The Brazilian. Um. Um, blah, 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 blah. I can't yeah, think The guy that lost to Jones recently Oh well, yeah yeah That's uh, what I was going to say Yeah Apparently, no he looked good um, I think Cause Cormier was coming out saying that Jones reckons he might go back down to like yeah, well, well JB really? called JB called him out and said you know, Where yeah. are you at So um, That makes sense as a fight That's probably the last guy that John Jones didn't beat in that division Yeah um, one of the guys that's come through and has beaten some of the other guys. for him to vacate the belt, though, and then come back, it's just from someone calling him out. Like, you'd think, he's, well, is, he, is he done with I it? I think in theory it's an easier fight for him. Sure. Yeah. In theory, yes. But it also... I'd love to, I'd love to see that fight. I'll, I'd watch that. It, it could be a booking thing as well because Stipe's got to fight Francis uh-huh. N- Nganu, so he's not available, so he can't fight for the belt there. Probably doesn't want to fight in the other guys in the top five um, just because they're not huge names and coming through at the moment. They're just kind of trading spots. Mm, mm. Um, he might take that Brock Lesnar fight if that ever happens. But again, will that ever happen? Speculation. Yeah. So, you know, what's out there in front of him for the next six months? Probably not a whole lot. So, hey, I could fight um, Jan and uh, that might be a good fight. Uh, coming off a big knockout of... Um, Dominic Reyes, who pushed John to five rounds. Mm, mm. Um, yeah, that could be a good fight, good one to make. Just uh, keeping an eye here on the AFL. Four minutes to go. Port lead uh, the Geelong Cats 58 to 40. It's mm. going to be hard to come back for Hard there, to come back for, yeah, for Geelong here. Not a huge lead, but um, with yeah, the way the points are going in this game. And with, yeah, with four minutes to go, uh, you'd think Port might be home. So it's an interesting uh, boxing match that happened straight after the UFC was Rosario versus Carlo uh, for the what was it super middleweight? No, that can't be. Yeah, that was no, super was. super welterweight maybe. Have a have a quick look. Rosario yeah. versus Charlo um, was for the unification of three of three actually it was all the belts in that weight division because I think we worked out the WBO doesn't have a belt in that division. So of the major four, only three of them have belts in that division. Uh, so uh, Charlo coming away with the win, um, dropped Rosario a few times. Rosario maybe snuck a few extra rounds in the middle there, um, was kind of pushing the pace and pushing Charlo down, which is probably the reason why he got knocked down a few times because it's hard to push a pace against a bloke that's got knockout power. Mm-hmm. Uh, but really interesting finish to that fight. Um Kind of, a, I think it was a right straight to basically the belly button, and Rosario yeah. goes straight down, starts convulsing. Um, they took him to the hospital afterwards. Couldn't find anything wrong with him. Really? Yeah, released him uh, not too long after that. Because um, when nothing, we nothing broken, nothing looked odd. But yeah, it's when we've watched really it live, we're, we're thinking maybe lower rib, 
Maybe maybe he's punctured a lung. Maybe he's got him solar plexus. And then when you watch a replay, it's it's like belly button. Yeah. yeah. So, so I, I think our thoughts of the maybe stomach and um, a bunch of say stomach acids yeah, going up into his, reflux. into his esophagus. Maybe that's what caused him um, to convulse a little bit. Um, but yeah, interesting way to end a fight. The, the the straight to the the belly button. I've never seen it before. <laughs> yeah, neither. Might start seeing it crop up. Um, so yeah, it was a super welterweight championship. Yep. There we go. Uh, more boxing news. McGregor versus Pack. Uh, both body, um, both parties have actually come out and said this is likely to happen. They're all both talking it up. Um, love to see it. I'd love yeah. to see it. McGregor has said the, his next fight will be Manny Pacquiao. And I think Pacquiao is coming out for and said, you know, for his people, he will fight McGregor. Bit of an odd statement, <laughs> but uh, yeah, for, it, for, for his wallet, he will. Yeah. Uh, Monks, can we get an age of Manny Pacquiao? 43 Yeah It'd be up there I trust that See uh, Connor shaved his head This week Looks yeah. tough Yeah <laughs> So I know there's, uh, there's been a few Semi homoerotic uh, Comments <laughs> Throughout this podcast Mostly by myself But uh, 41 41 41 He's in yeah. his 40s But yeah, yeah. That's actually not too bad Connor yeah. Is it Is there any chance That Connor could beat him nah, In it. boxing Doubt it We we said the same Is there any chance Against McGregor Oh, no, McGregor. He's McGregor. Against Floyd. Uh, against Mayweather. No. I I'm thought his size maybe would have given him some but advantage. They're, but, but they're different animals. They are different animals, Floyd and Manny. You know, yeah. Manny's just lost to Jeff Horn. Well, he's won a couple since then. Mm. Um, but, he, of course, Manny did nothing against Mayweather when they did fight, mm-hmm. what was that, six years ago It'd now? It'd be a closer match. Mm. A much closer match. Yeah. I Possibly. Think, yeah. I think Packy still runs away with it, to be honest. If, and again, it's the same sort of speculation that as of three years ago in that McGregor, McGregor Mayweather fight. If McGregor can tag him early, mm. maybe because he's going to have the power, but he's not going to have the. Well, he's going to have the size. The other thing is Manny's got more power than Floyd does. Mm. That's kind of what uh, Manny's uh, reputation is based on. Mm. Though mm. you know it's been lacking in later years of his career that he hasn't had as many knockouts as he did early. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, that's shocking! What's Pe- just happened there? Is Pe- perhaps his best mates hit hit the post. I think he he might. Uh, has he kicked a gold in this game? I don't he, think he so. He might have six behinds. Geelong's five twelve. Oh, that's garbage. And they're gonna lose this game. Um. So there's another tip that uh, I've got right live on this podcast. I thought you tipped Geelong. That's uh, <laughs> it was sarcastic. <laughs> <laughs> And Port, of course, in front of their home crowd. So Port are going to go ahead. Geelong, who, who does Geelong get? Do they get the... They will get, they get whoever wins from five and eight. So they're going to get West Coast. Uh, oh, no. No, it'll be the other way around. They'll get, six, they'll get the they worst get seed. And, they they'll get, get the worst seed. Yeah, the worst seed. So that'll be six and seven. Oh, unless eight wins. Unless Collingwood wins, yeah. which we don't foresee happening. We don't foresee, yeah. It'll be Geelong and St Kilda or Western Bulldogs, I think. Yeah. So, James, what's what's the McGregor versus Poirier um, story about? Well, in the last... So, obviously, McGregor and Pacquiao were teeing up this match, but I think in the last day, um, McGregor put a call out to Poirier to, for a charity match. So, oh. obviously, McGregor hasn't had any... Hasn't been getting any UFC fights at the moment. Nothing since Cerrone, which was two two years. No, 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 it wasn't that long. Start of the year. Start of this year. So, oh, is that all? Yeah, COVID COVID seems like it's been forever. (laughs) That was his first fight, probably in two years. Yeah, yeah. Come back since he fought uh, Khabib, I think it was. Yeah, 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 I think so. So, don't know the details. Apparently, he's been going back and forth with Dana White, asking for fights. Hasn't been able to nail anything down. Well, I think Dana's been like, "Here, here, gonna fight these killers," and he's. Kind of cherry picking a little bit, mm. possibly. yeah, mm. yeah. Um, so then Manny, I mean McGregor, obviously, then reached out to Pacquiao to try and drum up some sort of business, and then yeah, so I think it came out yesterday that um, he and Poirier were going over Twitter, um, kind of put out, "Hey, let's have a charity match. You come over to Dublin, we'll have a fight. Winnings will, um, I think the winnings will go to a charity of your choice." So. Um, they started teeing that up, bit of back and forth, took that offline, obviously gaining heaps of momentum. And then I think today, um, Dana White's come out and like 
and said, if you want this fight, let's get it done in the UFC. Yeah. Let's do it properly. That's, yeah. a, that's a good fight though as well. Yeah, it yeah. would be. Um, the last time I fought I was think Dustin still takes it though. You reckon? Yeah, he's just been way more competitive lately. Mm. Um, been fighting more, more often, more mm. recently. He's yeah, fought a lot of top competition recently too. Mm. Um, of course, fought Khabib and busted his hip. Um, but it's he fought the um, the Kiwi as well recently, or, or he fought Hooker, mm-hmm. I think recently, yeah. um, and won. Uh, kind of gave uh, Hooker a bit of a um, a schooling, um, showed you what a veteran could do. So Bory is, I think, top four at the moment. Yeah. So he's, he's definitely mm. up there. But well, it's not a good fight if A. McGregor wins, and that definitely puts him back in title contention. Mm. 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 It does. So yeah, it'd be interesting to see what comes out of that. I just I find it interesting that Dana White hasn't been wanting to give him a fight, and then as soon as Comes out and organizes this with Poirier. Don't know what decides. Oh yeah, we can do it. Mm. When's that? Um, Gashi Khabib fight UFC two five four. Uh, twenty fourth of October. Got about a month. Mm. Yeah, uh, and first, four weeks away. first today. Yeah, yeah, three three and a half weeks to go. Yeah. Mm. So we'll talk a bit that, about that when it gets a bit closer to the day. And yeah, upcoming. So the last story I had uh, was in the NBL, so the Australian Basketball League. We call it the National Basketball League here. Uh, there's a new team joining, the uh, the Tasmanian team. Can oh, you, really? Yeah. Can either of you boys tell me what the name of that team is? And you might have looked at it. So. I've already looked at it, so I'll, I'll pass on this for now. Pepe, what do you think the name is? I was very this, confused. The Tasmanian team. I can't. I was very I'm confused. I'm going really off the top of my head here, I promise. Um, well, obviously it's a Hobart team, or are they calling them Tasmania? Tasmanian? Tasmania. Mm, Devils. Nope. Think smaller. Smaller than a Tassie Devil. Mm-hmm. Tasmanian rats. <laughs> <laughs> Close. Is it a rodent? No. Nah, you gotta go smaller than a rat. <laughs> is it an insect? It is an insect. <laughs> Bees. No. Nah. Wasps? No. Nah. Nah. Yeah, well, he's I, never gonna get it. Nah. So. Ants? <laughs> nah. Well, it is an ant. Okay, okay. It is it's a type of ant. It's a type of ant. No, it's not a termite, is it? No. <laughs> the the Tasman. That's not a bad name, though. The Tasman Tasman termites. termites. <laughs> yeah, they'll it's fuck up your timber, boy. <laughs> <laughs> you got to treat that shit. Yeah. Nah, I'll give it to me. What is it? Is it Tasmania or Tasmanian? It's uh, team name. Have a quick Google. But the name, uh, the team uh, name. Bull ant. No, the Jack Jumpers. What? <laughs> <laughs> Jack Jumpers. I think it's the Tasmania Jack Jumpers. <laughs> yeah. Who comes up with that shit? <laughs> so if there's any Jacks, they go to that game. Um, That's so uh, bad. I, I'd, I'd bought you out, mate. The Tasmania Probably. Jack Jumpers. Yeah, Jack Jumpers. I can get the jumping aspect. Oh, like yeah, yeah, I get that, yeah. I, I can see some uh, some idiots sitting around the table and thinking, oh, that's a fucking good idea. Yeah, especially <laughs> there's a few guys called Jack. Yeah. Hey, uh, whoever Jack came Jumpers. out with that and is on some bullshit uh, board and went to university to study advertising, fucking go sleep next to a mirror and fucking wake up to yourself because that is horrible. We've already come out with a better name, the, the Tasmanian Termites. The Termites. <laughs> That's better than the Get Jack Get the Termites jumpers. in there. you got to treat your 45s, treat your 35s so the Termites don't get you. <laughs> And uh, on that note. Yeah. That was my last story, boys. Um, I think a big round of footy to finish off. Port Adelaide did beat Geelong 58-42. Um, to, they get a bye next week, don't they, Port Adelaide? Yeah, they do. And uh, straight kicking again. We've been harping on it. Yeah. Uh, Port's kicked 9-4, 13 scoring shots there against Geelong's 5-12, 17 scoring mm-hmm. shots. Uh, huge game tomorrow night with Brisbane taking on Richmond. Mm-hmm. Would love to see Brisbane kick straight um, and it'd be a close game of footy. Yeah. So Geelong will get the lowest seed, which will either be Collingwood, Collingwood, St Kilda, St Kilda, or the Western Bulldogs. Western Bulldogs. So I just pulled up the player stats. Hawkins hit five behind, zero there goals. Go. Yeah. Zero goes five behind. So that's the difference there, really. Yeah. Um, Got to kick goals to win. Mm-hmm. Okay, we'll see you next week on On the Esky. Enjoy your long weekend for those in the Canberra, New South Wales region. Yes. Thank you all for listening for our chats on the AFL, NRL, NFL, uh, the Formula One wrap-up, the NBA, the rugby, the NHL, the UFC, and, of course, the great Tasmanian Jack Jumpers. Go <laughs> Termites! <laughs>
All right. Thanks, boys. Thanks for coming. We'll see so you all easy. next week. See, see you next week. week. Bye. See ya. Bye.